Happy Wednesday to you, Living Soil Nerds. Uh, this is another fun uh, week for me, you know, even a, over the weekend. Uh, you know, we, last weekend we talked about passive income and we kind of talked about tying in a lot of that stuff, understanding, um, you know, really building up education. No one can ever steal that from you. I mean, there's a lot of variables in the information that we gave out last week. Um, and I was thinking about that over the weekend, Marco, where I was able to kind of just do what I wanted to do. You know, I work, obviously you work hard, but at the same time, an entrepreneur, somebody that has chosen to have their own business, uh, we like to joke works 24 seven so that we don't have to work nine to five. And there really is something to that, man, where, you know, I was able to wake up. I was able to go and enjoy my son's soccer game. Then I was able to go up to uh, Fort Collins. Excuse me. I drank that damn bean uh, up to Fort Collins. Uh, and enjoyed hanging out, uh, you know, with the cannabis community and that kind of stuff. And then the next day I was able to go and enjoy Estes Park. And I would have been able to do all of those things if I didn't have passive income, if I wasn't continuing to try to improve, you know, my little business that I, that I have on the side that is now or maybe has gone from a hobby to now a business and continuing to build that up and seeing it as a baby that it needs to be nurtured and you need to be working on that every single day. So passive income to me you know, that episode, so many people were asking, like, how did how to make money? How, you know, how do I actually kind of, uh, you know, find income for myself? Um, and to be honest with you, I think that aspect, you either have it or you don't. Um, and that's maybe a, a brutal truth about that. But if you have all your life hustled something, you know, made money and, and kind of maybe in a variety of different ways, I promise you have the skill set to be an entrepreneur. Uh, if you're so focused on like, um, security and that kind of stuff, you've never hustled or anything, then maybe, you know, the career is for you and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's just different ways of people that handle risk, especially calculated risk uh, and having other streams of passive income uh, is beneficial, even if you have a career. So I'm not saying that you can't do that as well. I just think there's a lot of individuals that want to have their freedom back. And in my opinion, you're not going to get your, your real freedom back uh, until you go full entrepreneur. So uh, our guest is having a little bit of technical problems. So I'm going to throw it over to Marco. We're going to chop it up. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. He's even going to be speaking uh, this weekend, uh, something that he kind of kept in his back po pocket uh, on the community. So I wanted to kind of go there with it. Hopefully um, our guest Justin will be able to pop on and then we can kind of get into the nitty gritty of what uh, this weekend kind of represented here in Colorado. Yes, sir. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, yeah, last that, that show was a great show. I think I got a lot of good feedback on that, man, on the passive income. And, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, we always talk about diversity and it seems like everything comes back to that, right? You know, diversity of income, you know what I mean? You can't have all your eggs in one basket, you know? And, um, by the way, uh, shout out to your son, man, five and oh, on the season. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they were five and oh, uh, they, they scored five goals that game. So the oh. final game, yeah, they were, wow. yeah. So uh, that little soccer man, that that shit brings joy to my heart. I used to play that when I was a young man, so it's fun to see. But again, to everybody out there, I mean, how do you get your freedom back? Maybe you don't necessarily make the same amount of money, and you know, you go from a career to entrepreneur. But I promise that freedom and being able to wake up and do what you want to do every single day, that shit is worth to me. I don't even know, man. Just to be able to wake up, and again, it's on you. So not every, not everybody can do that either. But you still got to work. You still got to do it. It's on you every single day. But if you are the kind of person where every day matters to you or focus on that, uh, please, I want I want, I want, want the community to find more ways to have passive income for yourselves so that you guys have more time so we could do this kind of stuff, experiment. You know, Marco and myself, we got all kinds of little experiments going on and we're able to do these shows and we're able to find income. So I know that uh, others are out able to find the time to do that as well. Yeah, man. Choices. That's what it really boils down to, because it's all about, you know, getting up. That's a, that's the first step. How you start your day. Make that choice. What time you're getting up? Are you getting up early enough to do something more than just, you know, your regular nine to five? Um, to me, early, man, morning is a great time to get up and kind of take advantage of some extra, you know, kind of quiet time, some time when you can, um, you know, get your thoughts together and, and think about, you know, your future, your plans, you know, thinking is a huge thing. You know what I mean? Like I say all the time, man, you could be in that mindless position, but your mind is not trapped there. You know, they all that everybody says that you can trap my body, but you can't trap my mind. You know, same type of thing. You know, you're always thinking big, always thinking of what you can do. 
And um, but yeah, like you said, our guest, I was, um, you know, surprised when you said, you know, I was just like a, a regular guy, you know, you know, went and uh, kicked butt at this big cup out in Colorado, you know. So, you know, all that boils down to, you know, choices he made, you know, on growing, how to grow, how to do what, how to, you know, pick what he's his, his cultivars, how to, you know, grow them the way you know, to maximize the potential of the plant, you know, so all that stuff is all about choices to me. Um, passive income, you know, for, for me, you know, see a guy like, um, you know, Justin, if he ever gets his stuff together um, and gets on, you know what I mean? But something like getting a third or, or even, you know, top three in one of these huge cups, man, something like that can, can propel you pretty quickly. And I think, Brian, you've seen that before where guys have kind of been um, not known in, in certain um aspects and then all of a sudden you hit a lick if, if you will and, and and get a nice uh showing at a big event and now now your trajectory changes you know yeah i mean uh, easy examples are genome alchemy uh shout out to him greg uh somebody that i think is obviously a, a flag carrier if you will for the community as somebody that is uh represents and carries themselves with class and then also AJ growing organic, you know, he's involved. Uh, he was involved heavily with the build a soil crew. And now he's got his own thing growing organic on Instagram and growing organic dot com. So when those uh, gentlemen won their perspective cups, if you will, uh, especially when it was peer based and, um, you know, the dude grows cup tries to uh, also simulate that. They give these little like wooden tokens and the community goes around and, and gives that uh, in fairness. You could bring a bunch of homies and and. You know, but but I, I feel like for the most part, they try to make it uh, as fair as can be. That's why a lot of these cups and Marco, you, I felt like you kind of probably experienced that yourself. You know, it, when we were in Washington is a lot of that stuff behind the scenes is kind of silly. So for the for the majority, from what I understand, uh, people respect this cup because it's community um, voted on. Um, there's pros and cons with that. You know, sometimes I like it where. Uh, like when Sticky had it, where there are individuals that were considered the judges. So you had the judges, individuals, and then you had like the the community pick as well. I kind of like that aspect as well. Um, also protecting uh, the people that are judging everything, making sure that there's no powdery mildew or uh, bud rot or certain things that maybe people didn't catch. Um, having all entrance in glass. There's such a difference from back in the day when some people would go out of their way to put their their um uh, entry with glass where other individuals would put that in with plastic um that's about um i don't know it's about as worst of a move i think you can do when you're trying to present your product is to put it in any kind of plastic uh so yeah there's a there's a variety of ways that you can make your brand stand out um and then uh here with with justin you know i mean he's a veteran here in the denver community uh, i've seen him at almost every single event I can imagine from giant expos to a lot of the Denver normal events that we used to have. We used to have a monthly meeting that he'd be a huge part of. We used to go for the, the lobbyists and that kind of stuff and talk to senators and try to get their ear, to be honest, it never seemed to really work, but try to get their ear in Denver, you know, more to be pro cannabis. Obviously things have changed um, in the, in the recent years, but back then it wasn't the same. Uh, and he was a part of all of that. So here you have an individual that's kind of putting in the time, putting in the grind, building a network. Uh, but at the same time, from what I understand, this gentleman currently works at a barbecue place um, and is just grinding out how I, I would imagine most of our audience and ourselves are grinding out where we just each and every week we get up and, and are finding ways to do that. Uh, the exception to that is that I think he is brilliantly minded when it comes to understanding the cannabis plant. Uh, he lives up to his name in certain ways. And when I've when I've chopped it up with him in the past of being a cultivator savant, um, you know, and then out of 65 entries, Marco just informed me right before we went live that two of them were disqualified. Um, but out of those 63 that were official, uh, you know, he finished third. And that that is really saying something because there's a lot of individuals that come to the Dude Grows Cup and shout out to those guys. You know, they've been doing that for a while. Uh, but people come from all over the country. Uh, there was an even a gentleman, uh, Owen, I believe his name was, with his lady, Marco, that came from Virginia. It's really getting into like living soil, uh, shared some of his cannabis with me and, and you know, it just seemed like he had that, um, you know, that that beginner grower spirit, you know, where like mm -hmm. everything seems exciting and 
that's what we love to see, man. Or we love to see when people come by the booths talking about how they watch the show and now they're changing their grow or they're they're thinking about things in the future or finding other ways to make money. That was something I was sharing with Marco before we came on the show. Uh, how many individuals last weekend were talking about the passive income uh, mm -hmm. show and just talking about how they were trying to think of other ways. That's all we want, man. I'll think, you know, a hustler mindset or, you know, just a business mindset in general it doesn't hustler sometimes have a negative con connotation to it. But somebody that that understands like flipping, because that's really all the especially the, the cannabis game is, you know, you're, you're trying to buy at X, Y, Z price and sell for higher. Um, and that's all that is. And then from from this aspect, you know, it's the same thing. So if you feel like you're confident in that kind of stuff, then, yeah, let, let find other ways to bring in that income so that you have more freedom in your life. So that you can go to these events on the weekend without having to worry about or taking time off. You know, you get to pick. Uh, yeah. And there's such freedom in that, man. And I know, Marco, you feel that, but you also have a career, um, you know, and I've been fortunate enough this last year. And, you know, I guess in the more like gray area of my life where I had that freedom. Um, and now to have that, that understand that time is the real thing in life. You know, if you, if your resources start to uh, are enough to where you don't worry about that, then you realize the time is the real value in life. Um, and I, I hope that that humbles you enough to realize that, you know, family is what is important. Chasing the almighty dollar is important for the family. And if you keep it like that, uh, I think you're going to find happiness and joy where if you're just focused on money, where you got the newest, latest thing. Now you need the newest, latest thing after you've had that a couple of weeks have gone by. You know, that's that's rough. And I know I had that in my early 20s where as soon as I had the newest shoes, man, now I wanted these shoes or you know, I was really into just silly things. And fast money will do that to you. So that's why we are talking to the youth and we wanted, you know, you, the youth, you know, your early 20s. We want we want your individuals to really think about these things, because if you didn't have like a mentor or an older brother or sister to kind of guide you on some of this stuff, um, you know, it's it's the older brother or sister in the family that kind of stumbles their way. And then I, I want to continue to hopefully pass on to the younger generations uh, some of this information that, you know, Marco and myself has acquired from, you know, just being old men, I guess, at this point. Just living. <laughs> yeah. You know, just living. And, you know, like, you know, one thing, you can have multiple passions as well. Like, I, I always say, you know, it's not like just one passion, like one thing I'm passionate about. You know, there's different things. Like, coming up when I was younger, I, I was really, like, passionate about construction. Like, I really had goals. I wanted to do, like, big projects. I was, you know, I like doing big projects, and I, and I was really passionate about that, you know. And, you know, I did some of the bigger ones that I've, you know, worked on are Lucas Oil Stadium, you know, where the Colts play in Indianapolis, and then also the Barclays Center, um, you know, up in New York. So I got to, my, you know, take part in, you know, working on, on projects like that. So, I, you know, those are on my belt, you know, as far as that industry goes. Later, as I get older in life, you do, you, you, you know, you, you kind of reach those goals, you, you, you work on those big projects, and then you kind of realize you want to kind of get into something else or get you know, another passion kind of pulls you that direction. And that's what kind of happened for me. Like the grind was real when I was, when I was in my twenties and thirties, you know what I mean? Like a lot of my friends, you know, everybody's going out, hanging out where I was on the road, you know, working construction, you know, because you have to go to where the big buildings are, you know, you can't, you know, if you're from a small town, there's no big time construction. So things like that, I had to get up and I had to go. Um, that's one thing I always tell young folks, folks too. Don't be afraid to um, leave. Don't be afraid to leave town. Don't be afraid to leave the comfort of where you're from. You know where Mama's house is and all that. Because really, what I've learned is that it, 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 things are going. When you get back, everything's going to be the same. People are going to still be there. You know what I mean? So, a um, couple of things dropped a little bit. Looks like our guest is popping in now. Uh, which is wonderful. So that means Brian and I don't have to rant for the next uh, couple hours. So yeah, Brian, I'll kick it back to you, man. I'll let you give this man a proper introduction. Um, this is my first time meeting him as well. And um, hopefully we'll get this show pop in. Yeah, Justin, while you had a, a few IT issues, last minute little IT fixes and stuff, uh, I gave a brief kind of talk about maybe just like what the dude cr Dude Grows Cup, you know, it's been around for a while, what it kind of represents, the way the community uses the tokens to vote. Um, so uh, as best as they can, I think they try to offer a, a fair, um, you know, judge of, of the cannabis in the community for that year. And there's so many individuals uh, that 
that value that that I was kind of surprised uh, talking, you know, talking with individuals this past weekend that flew from all over the country or driven from all over the country uh, just to some of them just to participate in the event. Uh, others as well, just just to enter. And uh, um, there's even a gentleman that was talking about, you know, he he entered just to enter. He knew he probably wasn't going to win because he was so new at growing, but he was just excited to be a part of it because it was, you know, he was joking when he was a little kid that he was just hoping one day that he would be able to like grow weed. And I think a lot of us in our early teens, we we had that same dream. Uh, Justin, you're a, a man of the people. Uh, you're you're a veteran here in, in Denver, Colorado. You have been to, I was joking around, you've been to almost every event I have ever been to, and I pride myself in going to almost all of them. So I assume that you also have been to all of them because I see you almost every single time. Um, and, and in those events, you know, even with the larger events and stuff, there's just a lot of egos. There's a lot of people that get opportunities in the cannabis game and squander them away. And what I've seen from you, sir, is you kind of just chip away and, and, and you know, from what I understand, you know, you're working at a, at a barbecue place or you're kind of like the people's champ, if you will. I mean, I know you didn't win, but at the same time, like you're the people's champ to me because you're beating a lot of these commercial farmers. You're beating a lot of individuals that are able to dedicate 60 plus hours to this where well, you're doing this as as more of like a hobby, something that you enjoy. I'm sure you probably want to uh, continue and maybe even move up on this. This is hopefully a platform and also today. Uh, maybe as an extra platform for you to kind of get your message out. Uh, Cause I don't know about you, uh, Justin, but I really, um, I was really excited when I saw you up there, man. I was walking back from the, the really back area where our tent was. Uh, and I just saw you up there lifting up the third place trophy, which was really cool to see, man, uh, with how many entrants there were. So I wanted to kind of let you talk about a, a bit of your background uh, and then we were going to kind of just dive into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you for having me and, and uh, having me on the show. I'm very honored and this is a blessing to be here to hang out and talk and hopefully talk with all you good people there. Uh, you're uh, you're maybe yeah. glitching. Uh, I would say maybe, do you see that stop cam button? See if you can hit that button and let's see if uh, we can get a better uh, stream going. You see the button I'm talking about? It says uh, you scroll down with your cursor and it'll say mute, stop cam, settings, and share. Hmm. Uh, watch me. I'm going to hit it right now. Boop. Yeah, at the very bottom of your screen. You'll have mute stop camera settings. So you want to stop your screen or stop your camera. Okay. And, uh, and you're still there, right? You're just an audio? Yes. Yeah. All right. Excellent. I think that's going to allow us to be actually hear you, Justin, uh, without okay. it uh, glitching. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's kind of talk about your background. Like I said, man, you are a veteran to the networking scene. Uh, back in the days when I was a part of Denver Normal, you were at every single one of those monthly events. From what I remember, um, you know, any kind of a, a kind of party or something, you were there. So you really put in the work, man. As far as kind of uh, probably, you know, getting a getting you the network big enough to where you could branch ideas off of a lot of individuals, um, and then you know, kind of take it to the next you know next level when you're entering a lot of these cups. I know you uh, also did pretty well in the grow off as well. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I've i been working hard on a lot of the uh, projects here and definitely, yeah, I've been started out. I started growing back when I was 19, uh, back in the day when I was a kid. I didn't smoke weed until then. I actually smoked weed for the first time that time and when I did. And when I did smoke the weed, I was just like, this is what I've been needing all this time. This is what has been out of balance in my life. And I, when I was 17, I tried drinking once. I was like, yeah, not it's cool. But yeah, I know I was like, I don't see the, the thrill and the fun of it, whatever. And I had a lot of friends that <clears throat> I hung out with. So ironically that got high, but I, at that time, but I didn't. And after I smoked that first bowl with some friends there, I was just like, this is what I need. This is what I want. And I, 
been ever since pursuing how how can I make this better for myself first I start off you know how can I make this better for myself how can I make this happen this is still during prohibition so you know everything I was doing was very under <clears throat> under the radar and very low key and you know all the seeds that I had to work with were just bag seed if I had you know if it was ever to try to grow anything it wasn't anything of quality and I'd never try to uh never really went to uh <clears throat> wanted to buy seeds like from Amsterdam there uh back in the day but my roommates literally told me and I'm not joking they came up to me with a straight face and said if you order seeds we'll personally pack your stuff put it out in the front line and you don't have to come back in the house I'm like okay so that's a good note to know because <laughs> they were extremely paranoid they're like you know we already smoke weed in the house we don't want seeds coming in the house or any anything of that matter so on and off through my early 20s, I was growing a little bit here, reading all the information I could, getting any book I could get my hand on, reading it over and over and over again, constantly looking and searching uh, for new information and buying every single probably from 1990 all the way up into the 2000s, probably about 2001, I was buying every single uh, magazine of High Times and any other weed related magazine that I could get my hands on and just learning and, and <clears throat> trying to figure out, you know, paying attention to this and that. And then finally, once I was able to start addressing how to, or start growing, I was able to start putting a lot of this knowledge that I picked up to, to test to see, Hey, does this work? Hey, is that working? Boy, I tell you a lot of it obviously was back in the day with a lot of bro science that I came across really quick goes, wow. That's really doesn't work. That's really just a disastrous idea. And whoever was saying that was really, really high. <laughs> um, but as time has gone by, uh, once we had for, um, well, besides recreational becoming legal here in Colorado, but I became a caregiver for my mom for a little while there before recreational became legal. And because of she has a neuromuscular problem or disease, and I was able to produce cannabis for her to help her with her uh, neuromuscular disease that she was dealing with, with the pain that she constantly was in all the time and nonstop, that it was something that really helped her out. And it gave me a way to be able to kind of start honing my craft a little bit more here and there. I'm like, okay, so this, these plants, we grew with this, these nutrients and this soil medium. And we got these results. Okay, well, I want to change that. I want to try this next time with this soil medium and these nutrients. And I was on and off bear, uh, making variables in my grow here and there, you know, always thinking about the end game, which was my, my mom. And eventually I actually picked up a couple other patient, medical patients too. So I was growing for a few people, which really was nice because then I was able to branch in a little more of looking into different strains. How did they affect people? Did this one work really well? And, you know, one that would work great for me would work terrible for everybody else. Everybody else is like, oh, this is just, no, this, it, my pain is worse. This gave me a headache. It didn't work good. And or vice versa. And one, I'm like, eh, I don't really get anything out of this. You're like, oh my God, this is the best. This is the best pain relief. I was able to sleep all eight hours last night. Didn't have wake up any pain or have any muscle issues or anything. So as, t and as time went by there, I was getting more of my craft honed in. And then I, uh, with recreational becoming legal, something I've, you know, I, I jokingly say, it just took only about 30 years for my career job to actually finally show up, which I was wanting all along, but just wasn't able to do it because it wasn't legal. And so I started working for a grow down in Denver as a trimmer. And again, just absorbing as much knowledge as I could, just talking to the growers when I came in in the morning, say, making friends with them immediately. The very first people I made friends with, before I made any friends that were really in the trim room, it was the growers. Because I'm like, you guys are the people I want to know information. You guys who are growing all these plants, growing all this weed, I want to know how you do this, what you do, why you do it, what don't you do, and why don't you do that? And so I was picking their brains, you know, first thing in the morning, I'd have a 10, 15 minute conversation with them and talking about their grows and them hearing things they're telling me about what they had growing on in, in their lives besides in work. And then eventually I moved from trimmer to uh, trimmer manager. 
then went into the grow and then moved into the mom's department, became the head of the mom's and uh, mom's department for all the mother plants for the, for the business there. And I learned a lot of information. And after that, that's when I uh, was able to join, uh, started going to normal meetings and started uh, networking and finding even a, a greater group of people to work with besides just within the uh, recreational industry, also other people on other ends of it too, like meeting with Brian, who was at that t- time just, you know, kind of pioneering into living soil. And I really liked the idea of going, you know, something more natural, you know, less is better. You know, something I realized really quick working in a dispensary is like, seems like we're really throwing way too much stuff on these plants at times. I think we could really get away with less and still produce a great product, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the head grower. You know, at that time I, I couldn't say this is just theoretical. And <clears throat> so that was a really a, a great, wonderful blessing of you know, being a part of normal with Jordan and everybody, all the other folks there that were uh, very valiant and very uh, diligent about just progressing with cannabis here in Colorado and making it better and more just safer access and better for everybody here in Colorado. Even though we had it legal, there was still, I mean, there still is a lot of things we're still facing with that. And that was a a great start for me. And now that uh, I've been working in it, I was working in the industry for about 10 years uh, that I, uh, in 2020 i got laid off from my job i was the head grower for a dispensary down in denver i was the head grow manager the grow manager saw over all the plants and everything in the building and they literally lost over ten thousand dollars in a day and the next day they already projected like another eighteen thousand dollar loss and they're like i'm sorry we can't employ you anymore you gotta go we can cover the plants right now but you cannot stay here and so all of a sudden, I was just like, all right, well, I'm out of a job. I got nothing to do. I got a lot of time on my hands. And as that, those little thoughts that run in our minds, they're saying, you know, one day when I have more time, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm telling you, I'm going to do it when I have more time, when I, when I have this time. We always, you know, jokingly say, oh, it's one day, you know. Well, it looked like one day came and there was a bunch of other one days just well lined up right behind it. No stopping them. So I really started going okay this is my time to put myself to the test i want to start putting my my growing techniques uh to the best skills i have i have a lot of time now i can really focus on my plants i can really pay attention to what i what i'm doing keeping proper notes keeping uh public proper subject matter of, of paying attention what is and what isn't and big part of what i've been wanting to do since uh probably back in 2014 actually or 2012 i take it back was that i wanted to start a seed business and we registered list seeds back in the day when we started dr grow uh, my education business that i run and with that we've i've always said i want to really do a seed business i want to produce really good quality seed at a fair price that people can get really good quality cannabis that's not a bunch of hype that's just this crossed with this, this crossed with that, and that crossed with this, and it's all these F1s crossed into each other, and it's just like, yeah, it's good to a certain degree, but I think you're losing some substance and some quality from that, and these last three years have given me a lot of time to be able to work hard on that, and producing, you know, small batch growing, it's nothing huge and large, I'm not like the big guys, but the quality is there, because I'm really looking for quality over quantity i'm looking to make this right and i'm probably throwing away about 80 to almost 90 percent of all the stuff i'm coming up with i'm like no that didn't work next let's try something else (laughs) so it's been a great journey and uh especially with the dude grows cup which i've entered twice before this being the third time i've entered i was really really been honing in my cure my curing and my drying plus also my overall growth for flowering and i'm really thankful because if anything more than anything it really showed from kind of you know basically a blind study of people looking at it or you know trying it and saying wow this actually is good not me just going well i know it's good but is it because i don't want to be the biased one i don't want to be you know over 
being over egotistic or something like that, which is not what it what it's about. It's about quality, like I said, over quantity. So that that's been a that's been the start of the journey and continuing to where I am now. Sorry, I, uh, I had to fall off my dumbass headphones thing. Uh, so I, so he, he was talking about basically, um, Justin, you were talking about kind of how you how you basically grew into this, um, your style, which, you, you know, quality over quantity. And I think you sound like a guy that, you know, you want to maximize your terps and that's kind of what you've been breeding for. Can you kind of take us through? Maybe your process for kind of how you got to the strain that you chose uh, for the cup here recently. Yeah, yeah. Big, I have to say first a big thank you to my friends uh, Jeremy and Nick for securing this strain for me, <laughs> or they secured it for themselves, but they in turn passed it on to me. Uh, it was papaya punch that I grew. Uh, it came from Pueblo, down in Pueblo. Um, and it is an amazing, an amazing, you know, expression of that strain from Oni Seeds, which big shout out to Oni Seeds. Thank you for creating this originally, Oni. Um, and I know there's some people that have been trying to recreate or trying to find this, you know, expression of uh, papaya punch. And there's some, I, I'm not joking when I say this, I think the person had three pack, 12 packs that they went through and they couldn't find anything even close. That this is a very it's, it's very much a unicorn kind of say from that seed pack. The other ones were really good. Don't get me wrong. The only, the, the other papaya punch were fire and they're killer and they're great. But for the terpene profile and what you get from this specific pino was definitely night and day. Um, yeah, and so what I've been doing is I've uh, that's something I'm very much working hard towards is terp terpenes. I think are Sorry, there's a little side tangent here. Terpenes, I think, are the next thing that we're really going to start seeing in the cannabis market because of how they affect your endocannabinoid system. That I think they have a lot of great, uh, besides physical effects of, of that, I think they really increase the, the high and the effects of the high. And also, I think they have very strong healing properties that we just haven't quite figured out how to hone in on yet and to use but we will here at some point i know it uh so back to for turkey sorry there um that i've been very much focusing on looking for strains and looking for things that fall into that high terpene expression profile and one thing i found is that when you're growing out plants if you're looking for something that has high terpenes doesn't mean it's always going to produce a lot of trichomes in fact it probably is going to produce a lot less trichomes you're going to see on the plant then you would comparatively something that could just be super frosty, but it's not going to have that quite that aroma and aromaticness that the the other one would. Um, something about something interesting about genetics, though, that it's it's hard to get. I mean, not that it can't happen, but it's it's a challenge kind of to get that balance between really high terpene profile and also really high uh, trichome counts at the same time. But uh, yeah, I've been using. Uh, Really focusing on my lighting. I've switched over to, or I've been using LEDs, but I switched over to some HLG uh, far red lighting, which I think has really been great, helping bring out some terpene expression and profiles. And also with the uh, GLD, great uh, green life biotics amendments that I've been using, have been really just stepped up my game for overall health quality flavor, taste, high of my plant. Hey, let, so, let's dive deeper into that. I know um, after you won, I was kind of talk asking you some of those things, and you mentioned that. I've never heard of that. Um, so without, like, plugging them, just kind of uh, talk yeah. about why you uh, why you choose to use that. Yeah, and I, I'm not paid by Greenlife or anything like This is just strictly my own perspective. So, I mean. Oh, honestly, yeah, Justin, I mean, you're the people's yeah. champ. I hope everybody knows that. Like this, this he, man is over great. here hustling, trying to put things together on his own, just like all of you. But uh, the uh, I really like their. Uh, they have some really good microbes that I use. Uh, their enhanced uh, MC, uh, really, really great microbes they produce. But they also have a, a really good fish emulsion mix 
<clears throat> that you use during uh, veg and then into flour for first couple of weeks, which is really great. Uh, it's fruits to shoot, so I really love that. But the big one I have to say for terpenes, if you're looking, if anything, if somebody's just wanting to really just raise their terpene profile on their plants and their expression, I highly recommend the Brix 57. That stuff will make your plants blow up with terpenes. And if it wasn't doing it before, it's a whole new game. And in fact, I've even had it that uh, I've had a friend grow out a plant had really great terpene profiles and I took it and I grew it out and it, it expressed a totally different terpene set that was not even expected to come out of it besides what was already before. And it made it even better. And I can just only speak again from my own experience and my own work. And obviously I've got to say it, it showed at the DGC cup that it, it really worked besides uh, the other thing I, got to say is consistency and focus stay on your plants don't flake out on your plants when you're growing them you know don't go oh i'll do that tomorrow if you do that tomorrow yeah then you come back your plants are half wilted because you forgot to water them or feed them. every day counts uh, I couldn't, yeah that has to be the motto for a new farmer you know start volatizing off and not developing as well as they should so that would be my other suggestion but yeah, I'm very much hard working on. Uh, I've got strains right now I'm working with that have very strong, heavy terpene profiles um, and working on breeding those in with each other and seeing what develops and then going from there and creating some F2s and F3s to see if it continues and we can keep that running along. Now, if, if this is the same product, the Brix 57, from, from what I understand, it's like a just a mixture of different sugars. Is this the same product or is this something different? It, um, I'm not sure what is the mixture. I know that it doesn't have any sucralose sugar. It's, I forget what else. It's something, some form of sugar, but I'm not sure what it is exactly. Um, but it's not, gosh, I'm trying to remember what the guy was telling me that. Sorry, um, gentleman was telling me when, because he said, he said something, something specific about it. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was because he said, that it's not what you get from these other companies that make nutrients. This is something totally different, but it's but it works in the same principle as the you know if you're buying or yeah he was saying like kind of like comparatively to molasses. Uh, this is something that the plants can actually take up a lot better and a lot more efficiently without it. Uh, yeah, and beet, beet sugar, I think and, soil spirits is probably on that too. From what I understand, it, it might be like beet sugars and, the, and different sugar sources. Um, okay. But yeah, Marco, I mean, what do you kind of what do you kind of think about that? I mean, um, yeah, man, I, I think definitely um, those high, um, you know, carbohydrates that I, when I use them at the end, you know, towards the middle of my grow, um, you know, the fruit based, the sweeter. Um, FPJs, you know, FFJs, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I like those in there because I do feel like, you know, anecdotally, like in my way of thinking, in my experience, yes, that does, you know, kind of sweeten up the plant, sweeten up the turps. It's nice to hear that coming from somebody else. Um, <clears throat> but um, I do agree um, that, you know, lighting, I think lighting is a huge, you know, between the lighting and the microbiology, those are your two huge, you know, next jumps in you know increasing terps you know and what if what, where exactly do you use that far red because i got um i run um science led and i can tune my spectrum as well so i you know been trying the same cultivar different runs different spectrums um how do you how do you get the best benefit out of that uh, far red or the uh, phytochromes i uh, unfortunately mine i don't is not adjustable it's just already set at whatever wavelength that it it comes with standard. Okay. Um, I know I, but I know that's a good question there. I would say from my experience though, with uh, having that red in there, I would say that it, well, one of the benefits that I've learned from it is that my plants, I harvest them about five to seven days earlier than what I normally can. If I didn't grow under the same, or if I still did a flowering light, but if it's a different light, not that far red, that it's about seven, 10 days, 
seven to ten days longer to harvest it under the non far red than it is the far red which i really like that um but the trick the one thing that i've had to learn though because of that because i've got almost a, a pretty much about a week early on finish is that i got to remember oh yeah i got to watch my feeding schedule then <laughs> Because I got to cut everything back by a week there, because it's going to be one week quicker than what I think normally. Um, I think that's I, that's true too, man. I've noticed that as well. Just to kind of add on to that point, like I had, I was growing the same cultivar, then I got these new lights and started messing with the spectrum, and I was like, "Damn, it, it seems like it's done a week earlier." Like I was really surprised, and then reading into it, um, that's actually a real thing. But what I always wonder is, I'm, I'm wondering if it's done a week earlier, you know, technically by the, you know, trichome, um, you know, cloudiness, w where do your terps stand? Did, could they have stood an extra week? You know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm wondering. What do you think about that, Justin? That, that's a good, now that I, I will tell, that's a great question there, by the way. What I have found, this is from my experience, that it's going to depend on your environment. What is your humidity at? you're harvesting so that, that's the first thing i was i keep in mind what is your hum, your humidity at now if it's let's say it's at 58 to 62 i would say then yes you could probably give it one more week if you wanted to but if it's under 58 let's say 56 to 52 you're going to want to harvest it that last week or that that week earlier that when that cloudiness is showing and maybe even a little bit earlier, just because uh, depending on the plant that you're working with, that because the uh, terpenes are uh, water soluble and they volatilize very easily, that the sooner you can get that plant out and get it into your your drying your drying slash curing environment to start out in, that the better it is because that once it hits that peak, they're gonna start they start degrading fast. I mean, it's it's like roller coaster that goes down you know really really fast you're hitting that peak of that hill and it's going down and the, the, for myself i found the sooner if i can get it right at that point uh like i said that five to seven days early that i know bam i'm gonna cut it down go put it in my drying tent let it sit there and then just monitor then what i do is just monitor my humidity then at that point and making sure that my humidity is not going uh below that basically 60 percent keeping it at 65 plus and for the first few days too i'll even say that you know my my humidity is probably like 80 percent or or 78 percent and that's fine that's nothing wrong with that it's just that that's what's going to happen and it slowly after the first two to three days and this is here in colorado it slowly goes down and then that's where i start really watching it like a hawk i'm like okay Where's my percentage of humidity? Because that's what's going to keep your terpenes there, uh, even before you get them into jars. Uh, or if you and I, I heard your whole speech there, Brian, about the uh, plastic. There, I was laughing to myself really hard when you were saying that. Um, I don't suggest putting them in turkey bags, but again, if you're before you put them in the jars or turkey bags, whichever whatever your your drying technique is, make sure that that humidity is. It's close to 65 to 68% for that first week at least. Just keep that high because, like I said, those uh, terpenes are water soluble and they volatilize really off. So if it gets dry, that water starts to dehydrate. Boop, 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 boop. You know, they're like popping like little bubbles everywhere. And that's why all of a sudden you're just like, damn, you guys smell that? Man, my plants are stinking really strong. That's a good thing to a certain degree. Also, you're like, you should also think, oh shit. That means my plants are getting a little too dry. I need to go check the humidity right now. What is it at? Because if I'm smelling them that strong, that means they're expressing. They're they're sending out humidity there. And is that a good thing? Is it because they're coming down to your 65%? Or is it now that they're at 60% and they're dropping down to 56%? You're like, oh, shit. That's dropping way too quick. So that's... Sorry for a little bit of the ramble there. That's what no, I was perfect for for terpene collectiveness and for capturing if you can. That, that's the whole trick there is just trying to keep that that humidity within that Goldilocks zone if you can before you jar it up or bag it up or however you then start curing your cannabis at that, after that. Okay. Speaking of the... Oh, go ahead, Margo. Oh, 
Uh, speaking of the Goldilocks, I wanted to ask your opinion, um, especially when you're offering something for it to be judged, uh, the humidity packs. You know, there's a couple of brands out there and stuff. Um, you know, th- th- I guess there's a, there's two viewpoints on that. I was, I was wondering, um, I don't want to influence yours, but obviously I have a viewpoint on that. I know Marco does. Uh, using those and and do you, maybe you could even say your own pros and cons from your experience. Yeah, there. I I like them. I use them. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a preference. I think they both work. Bovitas and I mean, I the two Integra and Bovita are the two big name brands out there, as we all know. I use one of those two brands. I or I use Bovitas. I don't know if it even matters. Um, uh, that's just what's cheap. I, I, I'm on a budget. <laughs> like we said before, I, I work really hard for my dollar there. I When I'm not working in barbecue, I'm literally at home monkeying with my plants and taking care of stuff here. And every like I said, every dollar counts. But um, I, I like them. I think they're good for a little bit of the time. Uh, I right, uh, right now, this is the first year I was talking about this too to a bunch of other growers at the DGC Cup, it's very interesting. This is the first time I've ever had it happen. This year is only because of our, our climate change and climate change is happening. My humidity and my growth or my dry area has been staying right at like 66 or 68%. I've had my plants hanging up for now for three weeks. And the papaya punch that I brought to everybody, I literally put it in jars two days before the event. I'm not joking. I didn't even touch it until then. And well, I can totally relate to that, man. Like, I, like what do you, I was going to ask you, that was going to be my next question. Um, like, as far as that long term dry, because I'm in Virginia, we have a it's very humid, even when you have provisions set up, you know, for dehumidification, it's still tough. And like you said, I'm hovering in my in my dry closet right there, man, upper 60s, you know, and, and it's to the point where I had to bring, and I use I like gamma buckets, you know, uh, uh, food grade buckets with the gamma lids um, or jars. Um, just depends on you know how much you got. But so it's to the point, man. I'm having to bring these things into my living space where it's air conditioned for a certain period of time to kind of slowly bring that humidity down, close them back up, get them back, you know, and and, and kind of work that game because it's like if I left them there they would just pretty much stay at 65 and probably stay right at that marshmallow stage kind of forever. So kind of what do you, what are your thoughts on, on that? And is that where you start getting that, uh, I guess, Goldilocks where you start, you know, turning yellowish and, and that kind of thing. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. The feed cut out there for a second. I think I caught up with it because it started. Oh, like, all right. I think I caught it. Um, <laughs> No, you're good. Uh, yeah, it, uh, I did actually bring some herb, which I I wish I would have give, uh, given a little bit to Brian then when I saw him. I didn't even think about it until just now. Uh, I had some uh, that has been drying for six months from Straw Nana, and it kind of has that yellowish, because all the chlorophyll is just, you know, taken taken out over time. It just evaporates out. But it doesn't mean the weed's bad. It, it's been jarred the whole time for that six months, and people were blown away. Uh, how good it tastes and how terpy it still was and so and because of saying that so yes i would say that even though if you are still having to burp it which is great that you're on top of that you're not letting that sit for too long like that um or watching that humidity level there just back and forth that um yeah that when you start seeing the the chlorophyll leaching out like that that definitely means you're on the right track it means that it's, it's getting better it definitely is now, for long term, I would say if if you really hit that point where you're like, okay, I like this, but you're like, dang, I got like five jars and I really only want to keep two jars out. Uh, something I've been experimenting with, with my friend did, which was genius. I don't know why I didn't ever think about it before. He vacuum sealed his jar. And what he did was he took a, uh, a quart jar and uh, took the ba- left the lid on, but took the band off and vacuum sealed it. With every, you know, with the weed ins- or cannabis inside the jar, vacuum sealed it with the, the lid on it, but not the band on it, and then just put that in his freezer. And he pulled it out, and dude, it was like it never 
it was, it was absolutely perfect we tried it three months later and i was like dude i was like this is the shit i was like we gotta start doing this more so i'd say for long-term storage and i know you're in virginia once you hit that that point where you're like okay this is where i like it i got the humidity and balance this is where i want it i would suggest doing something like that if you have a maybe a batch of herb that you want to just keep aside or you're not ready to use it all at once because i know you, you know how it is you can only go through so much at once um that that might help also to help lock in those terpenes there and help keep that uh, flavor and taste where you want it and then also just to, uh, just to finish on that same point um but for that long term you do like to keep it a little bit a few percents over that 60 or do you, do you always try to achieve that 60 lock it in for that long term so great question there now if i was living in virginia where where you are i would go for 58 to 59 would really 57 to 59 would be my ideal because of of just the, the higher relative humidity that you you folks have there in general uh, for here and for Colorado, where we are, where I checked the humidity this morning outside, it's, it's 31%. That's pretty much our average that we run with around here. So for me, I like to keep it between 60 to 66% probably is the highest I like to let it really be for long-term storage. If okay, so you could easily pull that out at that low, if it's 30-something, you pull out something that morning, by that evening, it's ready, for, you know, pretty much ready to smoke Indeed, yeah. yeah it takes like 30 minutes if you take a butt out to or to like crisp up kind of say okay that's super dry i got you that's why we got the colorado crisp <laughs> <laughs> hey so um you know with with those humidity packs uh from what i understand one brand and you, you know you guys do your own research but one brand was created for cigars and one brand was kind of created more for cannabis uh so you know kind of research that stuff if you will i think if you are growing cannabis and you need to use those um on a consistently consistent basis uh then you might need to rethink some of the things environment is obviously huge with that long-term stor storage uh i i think should be something that you hopefully don't have to worry about um if, if you're in the commodity game and and, and moving cannabis um, we're really just kind of focused on short term unless this is more of your personal stuff. Um, so those humidity packs and stuff might not necessarily be warranted. Um, you know, I think Marco and I've talked about this and I've, I've talked, I even talked with Duke over the weekend about it is it seems like if you had a variety of different, uh, cultivars, if you put it long term, that stuff ends up smelling the same for whatever reason. And um, it, it frustrates farmers that go out of their way to find cultivars uh, that that obviously are more like a skunky type smell, gassy type smell or fruity smell for individuals that are on that. And then they store it long term, do it, you know, in their way of they think is proper. And then it finishes out and it all smells the same. Uh, so do your research on that. I, I get it. If you, especially when you're newer to it, I've definitely used those. I think there's 62% and like 56, if, if I'm correct there, Justin. Um, so yeah, supposedly that will like self-regulate. 49. What's that? Yeah. It, yeah oh, I'm sorry. I was just reading. I was just rambling off the numbers of what the packs come in. Sorry. Oh, so they have a variety of them now, not just yeah. like two varieties. Huh? No, it's like, Six or seven, and they—they they actually, I think the the bobitas. I think actually, I thought besides the cigars, I thought they were for musical instruments too, if I remember right. Huh. To, for uh, people for taking musical instruments, you know, into high humidity areas, like for Stradivarius or you know, some very nice high-end wood woodworked uh, uh, symphony instrument to say string instrument. That and I know sense. the intent packs were definitely for food slash weed. Technically, they started out with weed, but the guy who owned Integra was all about, or it was all about weed. But to get the company going and to have any credibility, he, he put it for food. So and that's what made him a shit ton of money, actually. At first, I remember his promo. People would cut open a pack in front of you and eat it. Mm hmm. Like, wow, <laughs> dude, you got to do that all day long. He's like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people coming through that show, man. 
Hey, so so anyway, I mean, if you're newer to it, humidity packs. But again, that shouldn't be your uh, view as a long term farmer is that you're going to use those. Uh, you need to really dial in your environment. And, and these are things that come with experience and time. You're not going to mm -hmm. read a book and just be able to dial in these things um, as easily as you want. And we all wish we could. We all wish we could just read a few books and really sure. dial in the environment aspect or maybe even understand that it's environment at the beginning, Marco. I mean, when the forum days, mm -hmm. it seemed like everybody was just talking about uh, like your, your air transfers and stuff. Like nobody really understood that at, at that time. And people are just having stale air or uh, not enough exchange whatsoever so that the plants were just real spin, spindly and, and sick looking. Yeah, a lot of that was people trying to be stealth. You know what I mean? You were so concerned, scared, and nervous about any little smell coming out. It, it made your rooms kind of suffer and sacrifice um, if you didn't have enough money to, you know, afford some of that stuff. You know, back then, you're, I mean, even now, some of that stuff is up there, but some of that stuff is really expensive. And, and some of that stuff, you if you bought it, you were kind of looked upon like, why is this guy buying a thousand watt HPS bulb here? You know, like, oh, yeah, they're calling you to your house and they'd watch you. The cops yes. would watch you. That's a joke. Yes. I, when I ordered my, my very first light, I didn't use it for six months. It just sat literally next to my front door for six months. I did not touch it. Every day I looked at it, I really wanted to use it, but I wasn't going to touch it for at least six months. That way, if the cops came, feds came, somebody came to my house, I don't know whose it was. It's just been sitting there next to the door. I forgot to give it to the person there. Sorry. You know, I already had my story set and ready to go. And I know, was, was, yeah, I and to the, to the young folks or people out there today that have this luxury of just doing everything and showing everything, I know we sound crazy, but that's true, man. Like, I remember buying a book by Greg Green back in the day, uh, the Cannabis Grow Bible. And I bought it with cash, but I was literally afraid. I was I was really thinking there was like a chip in the book and like they were gonna follow me home. Like, I mean, it, was, it sounds crazy guys, but you're talking a different time, man. It was really, it was really wild where you could oh, lose yeah. your freedom and all your shit over that. You know? I had to go get soil from a hardware store that I had to go get take a bus because I didn't want to drive there. I took a bus to a hardware store and bought soil for my grow, put it in my backpack, and then rode the bus all the way back to where I lived and then walked three blocks back to the apartment that I lived in. And I did that over a two-month period so I have enough soil. And I didn't do it like every week. I did it like every week and a half or two weeks. But exactly as you said, and... There, there was no grow nutrients. It was just either the Schultz or the Peter 202020 or the 13, 10, 10, 10, 10. Right. And that's what I was growing with. I was like, all right, this is what we're going to, we got to work with. So, yeah, sorry. I just, it, it is, it's amazing how much things have changed and the freedoms that we have and the access and the ability of access now. It just blows me away that all these things you can order and buy and, you don't have to worry about that. That am I going to go to jail for for buying this? You know, it. Yeah, it, it's nice. Sorry, rambling. Yeah, that's good stuff though. That's what people need to hear, man. So they just kind of step back and remember, you know, appreciate what we got a little bit now. You know. Yeah, um, I guess to add a little bit to that, if you if you're really focused and this is what you want to do, you know, you could always switch out license plates. Uh, that's something that they, they just they, they type in a license plate number and it comes back. Um, but I don't think that really exists anymore. So you would, to be honest, you would have to be like a, play, you know, a major player in your city um, for that to happen. And that is the problem with that kind of lifestyle and underground stuff is, again, like the YSL crew. You know, they were supposedly um, watched by the feds for 10 years. Um, and some people are criticizing that because they were committing murders during this time while the feds were continuing to build a case. Uh, but imagine your life for 10 years. That's why that that Marco and I and everybody involved, we want we want you to find legal. Way. I can't. I think I tell Marco probably every other week how great it feels just to be able to do this stuff uh, in the right manner and, and, and not have the the stress of like the the street hustle of flipping packs because that. Yeah. that happens a lot like if that is your lifestyle you're doing that probably a couple times a month and 
you know, you got your Imodium ADs and your Pepto Bismols and stuff. Because if you're really in that lifestyle, it's fucking ner- you're nervous all the time. Yeah, you're fucking nervous. And so to to find ways to bring an in income where you don't have that feeling is real freedom, baby. And if you can continue to build on that, that's the gift that we want to give you guys. And you have to go get that yourself. Nobody's going to just hand you something. Um, and that's what I, I I think some people maybe misunderstood uh, with some of those self help books is like. You just sit around and wish for things and good things happen. And then that's not it. You're out there. You're creating good karma. You're, you're doing things. You're putting out educational stuff and, and you're influencing the, the community as a whole. And then that starts to transform things. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're just sitting around wishing for fancy cars and big homes and stuff, that's again, you you're, that's your selfish aspect. And I don't think karma works like that. I mean, I could be wrong, but. Um, you can't just sit there and be wishful for your own stuff. And that's something that I really like about Justin is continued even in those normal days, Justin. I mean, that's in a way that's kind of like old school thinking now. Um, and I miss that, you know, once a month kind of seeing individuals yeah. and, and talking and chopping it up. Uh, those were the early days of when I was kind of going around doing the living soil stuff and people, you know, a lot of those, a lot of the farmers, at least maybe not the ones that were coming to normal, but individuals around the city were kind of making fun of that. Oh, yeah, you can reuse your soil. Like, what a bunch of idiots. Like, these guys are over here, you know, hippie style cannabis. And, you know, you kind of self doubt or you rethink some things until, again, the like the, the bigger named individuals are doing it, putting it on Instagram. And you're like, all right, I, you know, I haven't achieved the same level of success as these guys, but I do see that my garden is, is improving. So I'm just going to trust the process. And hopefully I can get to the point where this thing is humming. And if you, you are that dedicated to that, everybody can achieve uh, a, a utopia where, where your living soil is humming and you are making um, quality, healthy plants. Um, and some of you, I know, need that to be able to take care of your family. So this is an investment in time watching these shows, watching other people's shows so that you can monetize that information that you learn. And that's what we're really about is hoping that you guys monetize the information that we give to you. You know, we're blessed. Marco, I feel like, you know, we're, we're lucky to, to do the things that we do. So passing that on is kind of what the, at least how Marco and I um, grew up is, you know, the, the older generation kind of passes on certain things uh, because not everybody has an older brother or a mentor. So if they see potential in individuals, uh, they kind of pull them aside and make sure that they don't act reckless so that they get caught up in stupid things. Because there's a lot of extremely bright minded individuals in the hood and, and in low income things. They just don't have opportunity or they see opportunity in silly things. And that's something that I I, I like to see with this with this audience is that you can kind of pu- pull yourself up from your bootstraps. Justin is prime example of that this past weekend. Just put in the grind. And then eventually, if you're really, um, you know, you got you got something to what you're doing, uh, it's noticed. And, you know, again, hats off to you, Justin, because it's noticed out of 63 samples, but you finished third. Um, and for for what you've been grinding and stuff, man, it's a it's a, a G salute, brother. Hats off to you. And I I hope you continue gr- that grind because this gives you probably a lot more motivation and confidence uh, that your work is being recognized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to work harder now and just make it more happen. It, it um, like you said, uh, it and you know, just if you have, you know, believe in one thing. I'll I'd like to say too is believe in yourself. Do not let yourself talk yourself out of greatness. There are so many, pardon, there are so many things that we we can accomplish and achieve that we talk ourselves out of and go, oh no, I couldn't do that, or oh well. That's just, you know, they won't think that's good or that's just, a, you know, I think it's a cool idea, but nobody else will. That whatever the goal is, as silly as it sounds or, or, or as grandiose as it may be, go for it. Just go for it. That's, that's one thing I cannot say more is go for it. And focus and consistency is a big thing there because thoughts lead to feelings, feelings lead to actions, and then actions lead to results action is where it's at if you make that action you're going to have the results just like brian said there that it's going to take a lot of hard work a lot of your time a lot of your money a lot of your social maybe some of your social equity of hanging out with friends or family as much but don't give up on that dream keep hustling keep making it happen 
keep talking about it. Talk about it as if it has happened already, too. Don't stop talking about it. T- tell everybody about it until they're tired of hearing about it. And keep telling more about it. Say, this is my idea. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to have this happen. I can't tell you because when you start losing, when you stay focused, what you focus on expands. And if you stay focused on that, that subject that you are focused on, it's going to happen. The mind can only stay tuned to one predominant thing at a time. Now, are you focusing on the solution or are you so focusing on the problem? There's only one or the other. It's not both. So again, just keep hustling, keep making it happen, and don't give up. I am proof of that. I, Like I said, I've already entered the Grow Contest twice before. I have uh, uh, entered a couple other contests too before that. And you don't always win, but it's always a humbling experience and learning, okay, what can I do better? What can I make better next time? Who did win and why did they win? You know, pick that person's brain, pick that winner's brain, go, what made your your stuff so much better than mine? I want to know because I want to do it just as well as you. There's nothing wrong with learning more. Always continue to learn. Sorry, now now I'm done off my top soapbox. (laughs) That's what everybody needs to hear. I mean, there is, there's no shortcuts in anything that in, in life that's worth anything, you know? I mean, there's maybe short-term games and stuff, uh, but this is, if you're really thinking about this as a future, then this is like, you're committed to this, I would imagine for a lifetime, like you're going to commit it to this plant, finding ways to improve on that, finding ways to improve on just plants in general. Uh, around your life. It's just, it feels good. I have so many plants next to me. I got all these plants ready for this weekend, growing pitcher plants and sensitive. I mean, it's just fun when you have that ability to grow plants uh, at, a, at another level with the, with the microbial life. Um, so I wanted to talk more, uh, Justin, with you about more of your soil mix. I know it's, um, you know, more of like a, uh, an old school type, type recipe from what I remember. Uh, So let's kind of break that kind of stuff down and and maybe people can see like you don't necessarily have to be gung ho with this. You can kind of start off slow, maybe buy some soil to to start off if if that's where you're at. And if if not, you know, making your own soil is something that, you know, we also think is highly important. Uh, But to be able to get it right then and there, like in a weekend and get things going uh, so that you have more experience. I'm all about that as well. Like if, if that's what it takes for you to just start growing, then, hey, go for it. Uh, so, yeah, let's kind of talk about some of the the tried and true uh, things you've been using over the years um, for your recipe. Yeah, I have. A, <clears throat> I've been using uh, I am actually and that's a great point there, too. And I have to say, too, and this is not because of Brian's business or anything. When I say this, this is totally objective, honestly, uh, that Brian is the person who's got me into. uh understanding more about soil and biology of soil and that is something i'm actually in literally in the process of that i bought my last two bags of soil and i said after that i'm going to just start reamending all my soil here i finally have got my worm bin running to the point where i want it to be that i can start amending my compost into it and i'm going to start working with uh, that for into my grow and just start making that more of a working component into my grow overall. But so what I am using though right now, which is a, is a works really well for me. I am using a uh, Fox farms, happy frog and roots, organic, original, uh, potting mix. Uh, I'm using a 60, 40 between the two, 60% of, of it is, uh, Fox farms, uh, happy frog and 40% is the roots, original organic. Uh, and, and you're hand uh, mixing what, that yeah and what uh, yes i am great question there what i do is i have a cup uh, two cups are exactly the same size and i just measure out cups between the two uh, so i measure out so many scoops of one and so many of the other into a bucket and then i do it a couple times and i mix it all up and then dump it into a master bucket and then just keep mixing it mixing it running it through pretty goes pretty quick uh, mixing it, just blending it really well. And then I get a couple of buckets full and then I just use that immediately to start transplanting all my plants or repotting plants that I want to go through. So it's very simple mix, uh, but it works really well for me. It or works well with the nutrients that I use and with the amendments that I'm using right now, I'm very happy with it. 
And I'm very thankful also, though, for my work that I have now that I've been developing for quite a while, um, that I'm going to be using tea from it and also uh, compost from it into my own soil also. And the great thing, too, is I got to say on a little side note, because of the worm bin, all my plant waste, and I mean all every single little last bit of it, including what I smoke, goes into my worm bin. I throw the carbon in there. Um, but all the plant waste goes into my worm bin. It's all recycled through the worm. And they could not be happier than the day of long. Well, the worm That's bin awesome. is something that you can set up, Highly. be successful with, and then it allows you to have confidence to be like, wow, if I can really start to get my life up in these plants' soil beds the same way I do in my worm bed, then I can understand why these plants can can take care of themselves, um, you know, as, as the months and years go by. Mm hmm. Yeah, man, that's pretty that's pretty amazing. Um, so do you amend that soil or do you just rely on the um, inputs in your weekly feedings and waterings? Uh, just uh, actually for the first two weeks, I don't feed them anything because of whatever's in with the uh, Fox Farm. Because the Fox Farm has a little bit of something mixed into it. Uh, but whatever it is between those two, the plants just love it. I don't, I don't actually feed them anything because if I actually feed them any food or anything, that they, it, they freak out and get over neutered. So I just don't touch them for the first two weeks, okay. and they're more than happy to blow up. And then after that, I just do a, a light feed for my first feed, like a, a half feed, and then I just do the next one, uh, a full feed, and then slowly add. Then after after the second feed, then I start adding amendments after that. Okay. Uh, slowly, gra gradually add them in, but the soil is pretty strong for whatever it has naturally in it. It it takes care of the plants pretty well already. So, now I've and read. Some, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I was just gonna say I've read. Um, you know, feeding uh laid in flour will reduce your terps. Have you experienced that, or what is your thoughts on that? Like them last couple weeks, I've I've heard don't add much of anything. Good question. I I normally just don't feed. I just I wouldn't say it's so much a flush. I just give the plants plain water for the last two weeks usually so when I uh, let, uh, whatever I'm growing out, let them just eat up whatever's left in the soil. I don't. I mean, I've already given them so much that I like to let them take up whatever they can at that point. Um, I don't feed until the end. I don't. I have fed all the way to the end and have not seen a change in terpene profile. Um, I just don't see the need for it. Um, I think that I build up enough calcium and uh, some other nutrients from there for them to finish out those last two weeks pretty well that they, I don't really have any major issues or anything I can say that I've had. But it, it could be cultivars too. I mean, I don't know. That could be something with cultivars. It could be um, soil types. You know, what is, what was already in the soil beforehand? No, I, I don't know. But for me, no. I uh, I've not seen a change in that personally. Okay. Yeah, I think people just uh, believe in the boom boosters, bloom boosters, uh, Marco. You know, right. like the PK stuff. Especially back in the day where you're talking 10, 10, 10. I mean, I used to see stuff from this place called Kelp for Less that was 50, 50, 50. Right. You know, I mean, gee, <laughs> like, what, what are we doing here? You know, it was like this bright blue color. Yeah. So, the, you know, it, it's come a long way for the, the community. And, um, you know, the fact, Justin, that you're still kind of using, in, in, in my opinion, kind of more of like the old school recipes that people used to write down on a piece of paper and pass to somebody like, hey, man, this is what's working for me. And, uh, you know, if you were really in that network, then you guys would bounce ideas off each other. And, um, you know, there was something else you were saying, like the, the reason you were able to find success in a way is because of your network. You know, you've gone to almost everything here in Denver. So you found some tried and true. Um, I think the gentleman you're talking about is love for the plant. Um, and he, Jeremy, he's, um, he's somebody that is also like kind of putting the time and effort, uh, I forget his wife's name, uh, just lovely human beings that are out there doing that. So they gifted you something you're able to kind of put your own talent and, and art into it. 
and here you are uh, making a name for yourself. Um, it, and again, putting work. This is the other thing I like about you, Justin, is you're giving credit where credit's due. You know, a lot of people might not have even mentioned Jeremy, uh, but here you are, you know, kind of starting off with that. And that's what I really like about you, buddy. And I, I hope that other people that watch this show today realize is that the, you know, the, the individuals that are putting their nose to the grind, keeping their head down, you know, entering, like you said, this was your third time, you know, maybe the first two times it just doesn't work out. Cultivars and kind of the popularity mm -hmm. of, of what's in the market right there is probably hugely dependent on that. You know, like some of those are you, you might be just hoping that that's what people are into. And uh, obviously this weekend, buddy, uh, people were into what you've been doing. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I have to give the credit where credit's due there. I'm thankful for, and I was thinking about it. If it wasn't, I realized, I was like, if it wasn't for my friend Adam, I would have never even participated in Dude Grows. I probably would have eventually, I guess, at some point learned about it, but he was the person who turned me on to the podcast back when we were working at a, at a, a wholesale grow together, my friend. And that's what got me into... I'm like, hey, I could try this out. I could throw, I, I grow a pretty good weed. Sure, I could try it. I'll see what happens. And, you know, all, all these years later, that, that actually worked. <laughs> uh, and I got to say a big thank you to Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy does uh, Living Soil too, which he's a big inspiration for me. I What I am trying to do right now, uh, because I have the seed, seed business I'm working with besides my own personal, that I'm trying to figure out a having at least one living soil bed to be able to, keep for personal plants but still be able to have my other plants that i normally grow for seed production in pot that i can work with them together so that's my my challenge i've been working with but between you and uh jeremy because i'm seeing him in action working with him and uh cheryl both uh, in action making that happen i'm very impressed that's why i said that i i'm going to be start reamending at least reusing my own soil at this point, if anything, and eventually then getting that living soil, at least one living soil bed going between everything else. That's, that seems to be the progression, you know, like That's Chad, what I was about to say. yeah, Chad, Chad, uh, yeah, is... Chad, he gave it a try. He said, I'm gonna do one bed. And then, you know, then, so we'll do one, right. Do one. <laughs> I love it, man. Start with one. You'll be, you'll have them all before you know it. Well, I mean, you it's really hard to doubt Mother Nature. Obviously, she has it figured out. And then if you're really taking the time to build these things up and, and understand that, like, hey, I'm just focused on diversity at the beginning. And it really can be that easy uh, to, to grow decent cannabis at the beginning. Um, and then, of course, you're finding fine tuning things to, to really take it to the next level where you're growing great cannabis. And that really is the difference. A lot of people can grow good cannabis. And that, and that is true. Uh, but to get it to the next level, to grow great elite cannabis where people are putting their chips into your bin saying this stuff sticks out. Uh, there is an artwork to that. There's talent to that. Um, and that's what I don't think the suits understand. Um, and then they maybe miss on individuals. And if you run out of money, Justin, which sounded like with your crew, you know, that's just unfortunately how the mom and pops operate. And again, that's why we had that show. Uh, we don't want you guys to to have your livelihood be dependent on anybody but yourself. Uh, and if you can live your lifestyle like that, then bet on yourself. Wake up every day and 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 put things and build your business for you. Um, and if you can't do that right away, then again, it's the weekends. You know, I used to I, I saw a very um, brilliant minded individual that was saying when you're young, you're constantly chasing pleasure. And if you're constantly chasing pleasure, then you don't have enough discipline to actually build anything. So you're just out there constantly being like, I'm working for the weekend. And some individuals live their life till you know until they pass on, um, and some people want to live that way, you know. But I, it made me nervous even when I was younger to have this like pay to paycheck to paycheck mentality, and then to work hard and then see like, you know, how much the government takes from you. You know, you you, at least for me as a young end of man, I realized that I have to have some kind of hustle for life, and I think it just in life in general the way that, that things are happening with just political stuff on both sides. Uh, you got to have extra things. You can't just have some kind of capped income and find ways to budget and budget and budget. Fuck that. You got to find ways Absolutely. to bring in income and, and budget that way where it's like, oh, I got this octopus 
tentacle going now. Oh, boom, I got another. And that might not happen right away. And that's okay. Like if you just have one stream of income and it's bringing in a hundred bucks a month, that is still success. Um, and you know, when I first started my website, I think I was making like $39 a month, you know, as, as it first progressed mm -hmm. and that's okay. The fact that you're actually getting somebody to pull out their credit card, trust your website, Shopify obviously mm -hmm. helps with that has the credibility to it. Now you're on your way. So if people are buying from you, Hey, hats off. If you're finding ways or people are reaching out to you, you need to run down that. And then if you're trying to find a way to get your branding out there, uh, then enter these cups like Justin has. Um, and you're going to be able to find success in that way. I promise in time, Justin's going to find something from this. Uh, there's enough individuals around the country that watch the dude grow shows. That's going to remember uh, this gentleman just because it's a it's a yearly thing. Uh, so, you know, he's he's third place for a year. You know, that that, that part is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I do agree. You got to got to think big there. You know, are you thinking small? Are you thinking big? Remember what you focus on expands. So if you're thinking big and not, like you said, it doesn't have to happen all at once. But if that's what you're focusing on. That's what's going to happen. One thing I noticed just listening to you today, man, is just the steady grind, you know, and if people have noticed you that or not, it's a steady grind. It's, you know, you've done, you worked here, you worked with this guy, you guys worked over there together, you know, you stayed on it, you stayed in the industry, whether, you know, whatever direction it went. And I think that has a lot to do with it, guys. You can't just get that, you know, that's called longevity. You know, it takes time to get there. Right. And you got there now. But a lot of folks want to get there immediately and a lot of folks got to understand you have to move around you have to do things sometimes you don't like to do and they're a bad move but they're but i'm sorry you don't like to do it but it's still a good move for long term uh meaning it puts you in a weird situation but then you got you know your next move is going to be a lot more powerful of a move so um staying in it is, is the key definitely rotten skateboards yeah, and, and grind time is is legit. Like if you really put put your put your head down, commit to ninety days, uh, you'd be you'd be surprised where you kind of come out on the other side of that if you're really waking up and grinding on that. Um, and I, I hope that more individuals are seeing that there's, in a way, almost endless opportunity to find um, income for yourself. And it might be small, but that's okay. That's that's kind of what we're getting at here. Is that we're Kind of pushing that button in your brain to be like, I can make income away from my job. I can find ways to make income without getting a second job and working for someone else. Like that, that's not what we're trying to say here. Like, I, I think I shared last week, you know, if, if you have to get a second job in a way, a lot of people would say that you're living above your means. Like if you're working two jobs to drive your car, that's silly. And I've done that a, a lot of my life. Um, but you're driving, you're driving a cool car to go to work. I mean, that's ridiculous, man. Um, you're driving something that's, you know, depreciating in value. So all of those little things add up to now where it's like, uh, you know, you can take the time at the beginning and start to build up something because the grind's going to happen. Life's going to happen to you, whether you respond to it or not. And that is, again, something that I really like about Justin. I think I've known you, buddy, since like 2017 or 2018. There were some of those Denver normal events where we were camping in the woods, tripping, throwing uh, those glowing I don't know if they were like bowling balls or bocce balls or something, but um, I'll never forget that, man. I mean, I, those are those are moments uh, that that are just unique, you know, like tripping in the woods with with people that you know pretty well and throwing the bocce ball all over the the field. I don't even know why we were doing that, but it sure was fun that night. Heck yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah, I thank you. I I I got to give it up to. To an old friend of mine there uh my friend steve I, I i learned from him that are both the same age but or were um but when we were living in ohio together uh when i was going to college there i was going to art school and, and he was a computer programmer and i've known him since uh since we were kids back in elementary school and he was writing a, a computer program He's like, man, he's like, I think I can sell this program here and stuff. And he's like, he's like, this would be really cool. He's like, so if I sell one program, because he was working for Domino's Pizza at the time, full time to live pizza to the driver. He's like, if I could sell one uh, program, it'd just be amazing. You know, so and he, I 
kid you not, he would go out and deliver pizzas all night. He would come home. He would stay up until about 8 in the morning after he got home from delivering pizzas all night. So he'd end his shift about like 12. From like 12 to 8 in the morning, he would be downstairs programming nonstop on the computer, working on his program. And he did this for about eight months straight. I'm not joking. Just every day. He was just devoted. And then finally, he had a program ready to go, put it up. And this is like pre-internet, uh, still chat boards, <laughs> put it up and somebody bought it. And he's like, wow, this is amazing. Somebody bought my program. This is awesome. He's like, all right. He's like, now if I could sell two in a, in a week, I could actually do one less shift. I could work one less shift. And took about two weeks. Sure enough, he he sold two programs in one week. And he's like, "Holy crap, this is fucking amazing! This is great, dude." He's like, "All right, now if I could sell four programs in two weeks, or no, he said three. If I could sell three programs in two weeks uh, consistently, I could go down to part time." And again, it took about two weeks for it to happen, but he was then consistently selling three per for two weeks and so then he went down to part-time and eventually what happened was that he was able to quit working at Domino's and was able to full-time work on his programming and making his computer program because he had other programs he wanted to create and then eventually moved the company back from all because we all grew up here in uh, Colorado and Boulder moved the company back to Boulder turned it into a multi-million dollar business and sold it so just and that inspired me I mean watching that personally watching him devoted and just like going damn dude i'm like how can you be like working on this project i'm like you need to take some time off he's like no i'm gonna make this work this is gonna happen I'm like all right whatever i'm like when, when you want to smoke a bowl let me know come on upstairs we'll, we'll get high <laughs> right <laughs> but it, i was just impressed by his devotion and i realized i was like you know what if you don't put the like you said if you don't put the time in you're not going to see the results but it will happen and uh. i I saw it firsthand, and that's what motivates me and makes me want to keep striving and going. Like, don't give up, just keep going. I've mentioned this book probably every time I, I can. Um, Malcolm Gladwell's uh, Outlier. Uh, there's a special part in that book where it talks about 10,000 hours. Uh, and there's some science, science in that book where it kind of shows, like, if you're really trying to master something, uh, the, those amen, amount of hours seem to actually be what it takes. So if you're trying to be like a musician, you know, you need 10,000 hours of playing your and actually being on stage kind of thing, not just sitting there playing. You know, you have to be in your element. So if you're a comedian, you got to have 10,000 hours of stage time. That is a shit. That's why they say it takes 10 years to be a good comedian. So it kind of correlates to a lot of that stuff. I think if you're going to be like a high end cannabis farmer, it probably should take that long. Or, you know, we've always said four years. Um, you know, if you're into this, this is your your, you know, your secular education, if you will. You devote four years. You got your freshman year where you're just trying to really uh, be profitable. And then as you come into your your sophomore and junior years, you know, now you're actually trying to get your name out there. You're going to the expos so that by your senior year, you've branded yourself and you're out there, you know, where people actually know you and that kind of thing. And if you take that approach and you realize that's quite a chess move, right? Four years is a long time. Um, but if you understand that from the beginning, uh, and you put the grind into it because of social media. I think a lot of you could achieve putting your brand out there and becoming like a brand within four years. And if you talk to a lot of people that have built businesses, uh, that's actually not that long. And a lot of you will give up. I, I know that, you know, most people give up even before 90 days. So again, this is a four year commitment. Uh, and if you trust the process in yourself and you're trusting the process and building these things up, uh, entering cups like Justin and just really getting into that and and educating yourself like he's mentioned oh, time and time again. And I've I guess I'm your uh, co-signer on that, man. I've personally seen that. I, I've seen you at, like at events and, and signing up for stuff. And, uh, you know, th that goes a long way, I think, with people, too, when they want to share things where it's like, wow, this individual is trying to learn. Um, that's why I've always hopefully been so generous with my information with you, Justin, is I would love for the community to farm with a living soil, even all the way back then. Um, so that we could we almost have a voice in that way. In my opinion, back then, it was the only way I felt like we could all come together and say one thing uh, without all the drama and bullshit as collective as one and say, hey, we at least want to grow with Mother Nature. 
And uh, hopefully now, especially with these shows and a variety of other shows, more people across the world are wanting to say that uh, with us. Yeah, they, yeah, I, they, they sure I, are. Go ahead, Justin. No, you're good, my friend. No, I was just going to agree, man. So, you know, just, just tagging on. Like, we always hear people say, you know, a lot of the things that our guests say, a lot of the other guests say. Like, you know, all the people that are on here that, that we've had that have been successful, everybody talks about hard work. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the time. Work and time, you know, that equals success. You know, some people get success really early. And that doesn't always mean your chart is going to continue to rise. You know what I mean? They call it falling off for a reason because sometimes you rise to a certain point and then you fall off, you drop. You know, to me in life, like someone said, it's a lifelong journey. Weed is 207. Um, you know, you should want your chart if you have your life has a chart, you know, of doing good and bad, up and down, like it, like you see, your chart should it should go all the should end up and then till you die. Well, when you die, you you fell off. You know what I mean? Like you, there's nothing wrong with continuing to get better at the, your full life, just taking your time, making it slow, making that slow progression. And um, to me, you know, that's key is just, you know, sometimes taking your time, but putting in the work when you're young, because when you're old, you can't put in the work. You know, your body can't physically do as much work. So put in that work while you're young. Yeah, and something I like where you talk about, Marco, is putting in that work when you're young with your body so that you aren't an older individual. And you see that a lot, like uh, people that are older that are like movers or something. They're kind of down on their luck. Um, you know, that's just that's just not what you want. You don't want to end up like that. So thinking and having chess moves with life and not letting life just come at you or come by or getting so stoned that, you know, months have flown by and you haven't really looked yourself even in the mirror. Um, and a lot of some, you know, even in the good times, that stuff can go by. Like you forget, like weeks are going by here. Months are going by here. Like, what am I, how am I being productive? How am I, I, I think you lose sight of that stuff on both angles when you, when you don't got any money and when you got, you feel like Bill, you know, the hood Bill Gates, if you will, uh, rolling around where everybody knows you got a little extra jingle in your pocket than others. Um, and the, both of those sides, I think, of the coin teach you a lot of stuff just about life um, and that, you know, monetary things are are important uh, to, to a point. Uh, and then I think it comes about more just experiencing life, finding those networks. Um, you just those are the things, Justin, like I, I do kind of miss, like people don't organize those cool ass events like Denver normal was man, where, you know, at least once a month you could get together. It seemed like maybe two or three times a year, we'd have a huge event. And then I was even lucky enough to go to DC on a trip and, and get to meet um, really powerful individuals where it was just eye opening to see, you know, meet face to face people that in a way are kind of running the world and they definitely have a different aura about them than, you know, your average person. So it was just, really cool and eye-opening to see experiences that's what life's about and unfortunately it seemed like after that gentleman um, passed away in that automobile accident uh that the spark of denver normal kind of went with him yeah we're, we're working what was that on, guy's name uh, left for the uh, what was jordan's right hand man the older lawyer gentleman that would always like he'd be like oh that's, oh, that's oh, not correct oh Man, he was a fucking badass. Too. That like, dude was, man. man. He was, he devoted a lot of his free time. I wish I could remember his name because he deserves for us to say his name. But uh, maybe yeah. somebody in chat. I don't know if anybody from what, what was his catch? For, what was his phrase that he said again? Oh, would you say, oops, that's not correct. He used to say that. I thought you said, you just said that, Brian. You're like, he used to always say something. Talking about that guy. Oh, no. I don't, I don't, my bad, dude. I don't think I was Dennis. What was his name? Anyway, shout out to him because he was at the forefront of kind of like teaching us stuff. I, I from what I understand, he helped us even get the trip going to the, to DC where you could see that kind of stuff. So you saw state legislation as well as like national legislation. Um, pretty cool stuff, man. Because behind the scenes, um, they're pretty clueless on cannabis. Like the lady was asking me, what's the difference between cannabis and marijuana? And she's, you know, creating policy on it. Uh, so it, what that gentleman was doing, his work was is going to be missed definitely in this state. And 
Uh, I would imagine in other states, uh, there's a lot of under, other individuals like him that are, are working around the clock to try to make their state to where he and other individuals were able to make our state, Colorado, kind of be at the forefront of at least uh, cannabis thinking and, and laws. Damn, I wish I could remember that guy's name. I know. It's, uh... He was killed in a, dry, a, a drunk driver swerved. Um, yeah. And then it later sure. came out that she might have, you know, done it on purpose, which was really hard to hear because that guy yeah. was like a light. Damn. It was really cool. Yeah, it's terrible. So anyway, you know, respect your elders because they're the ones. I mean, this again, that guy was doing that shit for free. Nobody was paid that Denver normal. You know, so there's just something to that, I think, when people are willing to give their expertise so that an organization can do things and be knowledgeable enough to articulate. Because talking to centers and stuff like that um, is really brief. Like they, that, from what I see, at least on the days that they allow, like they talk to so many people and they might give you a 30 minute window or an hour window. So you got to really be on point with that. Uh, and I encourage people if they want to change things. Go see it for yourself. You can schedule time. Um, and I think by law, um, at some point, they have to see you. Like if you're if you're committed enough to it, uh, they have to see you by like their oath or whatever. So I'm not 100 percent on that, um, but someone from their office has to see you. I know that you might not necessarily get to see them, but someone from their office will at least like hear what you're trying to, to say. Yeah, you can definitely go to D.C. and um, walk right up. You know, you, well, I don't know about now, but you could usually just talk to your congressman, find, catch them outside of these, out, you know, outside of the building, the Capitol. They're just out there walking around usually. So, Justin, you know, we're we're getting older here, buddy. Marco and I were joking about this. You know, just time is, is going by. So the people that are watching you, uh, you know, you've gone through the grind of it. You, you've had some mentors, you've watched a lot of videos. What would you say is kind of the best ROI for them? Is it watching YouTube videos? Is it reading certain books? Uh, you know, what, what in your opinion is, is worth them putting their time and effort into? Maybe they only have the weekend, so they only got two days to really kind of grind this out. Um, and if you're trying to build something, then obviously that's not that much time and you got to devote what you can to it. That's a good, good question there. Um, that would be it depends on what they're looking for I, if they're a beginning grower if they're, i mean if they're looking for knowledge to how how do i start or how do i get get going um hmm, trying to think of what a good source would be um because i like dude grows but that they're their subject matter is well actually you, you could go to their uh website dude grows because there's actually it, they have a whole backlog of information that would literally tell you on how to get started and what you would need to get started your grow um as for viewing content because i know nowadays that a lot more people are more inclined to either podcasts or to youtube um i would probably go with uh, i really like ross to jeff with iregenetics he's got very very good uh quality information so does the dude grow show that's another um, denver dude that i think i wish more people nationally knew who you know just a cool dude yeah good dude. jeff is awesome 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 guy i love jeff jeff's just a good friend he's 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 great i respect him greatly and dearly and he tells it like it is if you want to know what it's like to work in a dispensary or, or what it's like to get into the cannabis industry. He just did a very recent podcast of what it's like and what, what's going to happen. And he, he was no old barred. It was great. I really appreciate it because he's like, you're going to start off doing the shit work. And he's like, no offense to the people that do the shit work either, but that's what you're going to do. You're going to start off as a trimmer. I know you're like, Oh yeah, I got all the experience. I want to be a grower. And they're like, Nope, you're going to start off as a trimmer, but promise that, you know, be humble, take it in, do the job, keep your head down, keep doing it. And eventually you'll get into the grow and, um, you know, show up on, he's like, no, show up on time. Make sure you're not too high to work. You know, that's a big thing there and make sure you do a good job and you'll, you'll be fine. 
Uh, but he's a really good ed educator too. I really like Jeff a lot. I would really highly rec recommend him. Um, also, uh, with uh, the Dude Grow Show, there's some you can search through their episodes to see something maybe a little more tailored to what you're curious of. Um, I'm trying to think of any, uh, but I don't know any other for education towards getting start I and mean, this is again getting started um i'm not as sure of who i would suggest besides obviously with you i would suggest for learning about soil and learning comp you know and you know because person's going to have a choice of either hydroponics or soil it's going to be one or the other and uh, i think they really need to understand both aspects of it and understand the pros and cons of both and what they're going to be dealing with to say and what it's going to take for them to work with those uh medium grow mediums because that's going to be a big part of your whole setup too that i think that's a big education i would obviously i definitely recommend brian you, your knowledge on that because you 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 know very much what you're talking about and you explain it very well to make it very very obtainable too i don't think it's really hard uh being able to have a worm bin and to have a living 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 soil but it's, it's not that much work at all it's just a matter of uh dedication and, and time uh but then for edu other education other education i really do like the uh podcast uh the uh gentleman from i forget what island it is he's out in washington um that's a really good one because it, he talks to, to a lot of breeders so if you're into growing for breeding that's some really, really interesting interviews he does with the breeders. He does like two hour interviews, usually or hour and a half interviews with the breeders and asks them tons of different questions, great questions. Uh, so if you're into breeding a lot, I would definitely recommend that for knowledge. Um, and again, it's within a two hour period, something somebody can listen to and gain a lot of interesting knowledge. Uh, also, then I would I would say you know go old school you know read books. I've written some books on growing cannabis. Uh, what I've written I'm in the process of changing the context of right now. Uh, that's why I didn't directly first direct mine because it, some of it's outdated and some of it I've changed that I wouldn't suggest now what I did suggest before. Uh, but in, we're going to re-release those books here very soon. Uh, under doc, it's under Dr. Grow. Uh, but for other uh, educators, I would go with, uh, you know, do your research. Uh, I would even look into old episodes of possibly of Subschool. He had some very interesting information that he produced back in the day. I know there's a lot of old YouTube videos that are still available that can be subscribed to and, and watched. Um, and talk to your fellow growers, you know, ask them, you know, talk if you can. Now, this is a, I know if you're in prohibition land, this is going to be easier said and done by far. And it probably won't happen because I did meet some very wonderful, wonderful people at the DGC Cup that do live in prohibition land. And I was like, hey, are you on Instagram? They're like, nope. I'm like, hey, how can I send you photos? And you're like, you can't. Just send me a text that everything went great and I'll know what you're talking about. I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, cool. Fair enough. And I was like, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to push this any farther. Uh, but talk to your fellow growers, see, you know, start, start developing a network in your, your community or your area. If you can start building that, that group, that trust, um, talk to other growers, find out what they're growing, you know, what, what's working for them, what's not, and what they're using towards lighting, spacing. Are they using a tent? Are they using a closet? Are they using a, uh, a shower? You know, I don't know, uh, a shed. Uh, find, you know, also I'd say do education towards, you know, talking to your community, people around you, you know, that, that possibly do grow and, you know, build that trust and, and make that network happen because that's where it's about, which I think is a big thing. I think Brian uh, was saying about earlier is that basically it's a big community thing that we as uh, growers and as cannabis enthusiasts that we really stay as a community because we to really make this more happen and become more out the upfront and out front that we need to really band together and bring, you know, bring that to the community more and help 
help educate people that don't understand, like Brian was saying, well, what's the difference between marijuana and cannabis? That woman that he was talking to, there's a lot of people that have no fucking clue about any of it or any benefits of it other than people just want to get high and do stupid shit while they're high, you know, whatever it is, you know, and, and people don't understand there's other benefits to it and the, what you can do with it and how it is actually a safer consumption for recreational use than most other things available on the market right now too. So, um, I would say that too. Definitely talk to your community, you know, see if you can build that community or get into a community that has already developed and learn and just be, be learning. Don't think you know everything. I don't know everything. I've been growing since 91, technically, um, on and off for quite a few years, but consistently since 2012, basically. And I'm just constantly learning, constantly, constantly learning, putting in the time, reading, listening to others, trying it out for myself, going, okay, that did work. Okay, well, I can see how that worked for that person, but that didn't work in my environment. Um, that would be the other thing, too, is if you're somebody who is maybe possibly established and they're growing, wanting to learn more, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, do, your, do your due diligence or research, but go for it. Just try it out. Try something different. Don't get stuck in the, uh, just because Uncle Bob said, this is the way you grow and this is the way he does it. And he taught you how to grow. That's cool that Uncle Bob does that and that works for him. But you're not Uncle Bob. This is not Uncle Bob's house or his environment where he grows. You're growing with this A, B, and C and using this lighting. Uncle Bob's using this for lighting. And that's, that's a totally different world. So do what, start to really also focus on what really works for you. Start writing that down. Start, you know, like, hey, this, I got really good results with this. Or, hey, I got really bad results with this. So don't do this again. Or do do this again. Too, for uh, once you start uh, gathering that information, just try to, uh, try to write down that stuff that does, definitely the stuff that does work too. And the stuff that doesn't definitely immediately change it and, Go back to what does work or try something new to help make that even better. So that, that's what I would suggest for the moment. I like all that. I, I would put a caveat on that. If you're if you're brand new to this, then you kind of need to just kind of follow your lane, dial in, dial it in so that you know, like, hey, I changed this and you know that it actually affected it. Um, there's just so many variables when you first get into this that you, again, got to realize this is a lifetime thing. Um, and, and Justin, for, for you to say that you've been growing since 91, dude, Jesus, bro, you know, like, <laughs> it seems like a lifetime ago, man. That was before the Olympics in Atlanta, you know, like five years. So, I was in, in high school. Like, I was a freaking, you know, going to my senior year in high school. And I always feel like, you know, I've been around a while. So that's big respect. Yeah, man. That's, that's cool that you're willing to share all this stuff because well, – you know, a lot of people want to win awards, uh, but they don't want to put in the, the time to eventually get to that. And um, I think you just keep chugging along. And again, you have talent. Uh, talent rises to the top. Um, Marco's pretty yeah. famous for saying that. One thing I'd add to that as well, guys, is like find a mentor. And um, Justin kind of touched on it, you know, getting in the community, getting in a group. Uh, mentors are great, man, because you what you do is you take that guy's knowledge and then you get it in, a, in about, you know, a tenth of the time, you know what I mean? You get it right away. It saves you a lot of time. It's kind of like a cheat code. Um, I tell that to, you know, my buddy, I got him going and he's taken off with it and hadn't really said much to me. So I'm like, all right, he's off to the races. And, um, you know, that, that usually works out. And then when there's an issue, then, you know, then they got a mentor to fall back on, you know what I mean? And so mentors are good. It helps you where you don't necessarily have to go through things on your own. And shows like this, I was watching, you know, just browsing around FCP. There's all kinds of shows on there, man. Um, all kinds of things. If you guys are into it, it's there. You just have to take some time, uh, sit there and watch it. But um, road trips, great time. Just pop in a good educational, you, you know, YouTube or video or or even ebook and learn something during that time, you know. I think you also mentioned something, Justin, that I noticed um, the gentleman that gave you the cut, Jeremy, put on an event in Colorado. A lot of people came. Uh, there were a lot of people that were into living soil, newer to living soil, but also hydro farmers. And I remember talking to a group of individuals. And then one dude passed me a, a 
kind of pulled me aside and he's like, well, that guy can't really, I'm paraphrasing, can't really teach me anything uh, because he's a hydro grower. Um, and I always, that kind of stuck out to me because I was like, well, you know, I didn't say any of this to him. But I think if you're if you're able to talk to a guy that's a commercial hydro grower, there's going to be a lot to learn there, even if you you never grow with that style. Just the fact that he's a commercial farmer and you're maybe newer to this or, you know, a basement farmer, that's a drastic difference. And if you never felt that difference and the stress and all that of managing something at oh. such scale, then you might not ever know that feeling. Uh, but there is definitely a different there's just a whole different vibe to it. The whole team is stressed. Uh, there's just a lot. You know, it's the pros, in my opinion. You know, you're, you're in the pros. You're, you're trying to make a, a brand name for yourself, trying to make it in the big leagues. Uh, so if you if you have the ability to talk to commercial hydro farmers, I, you're still going to have knowledge that I think, well, what if somebody was able to throw you into a position? It's like, hey, I think we're going to go this way. We're not really sure. Uh, but but right now we're running hydro. Um, it, you kind of want to have both skill sets or at least, you know, be always be honest, but being saying like, hey, I do understand certain nuances of this. If you guys could kind of guide me on that, I feel like I could also take over this ship and then move the, the company forward. Uh, but you want to be able to obviously drive the the automatic car, but also have the ability to drive the stick and however you view that either way. Uh, but you want to have the, the ability to kind of jump in and, and steer the ship with with whatever option, because you might not get an opportunity otherwise. Usually people are bringing in a whole new team because that that team obviously beforehand is failing. So you might have to like kind of finish out that grow with that style when you're coming in and kind of taking over things. Um, and, and that's just kind of the brass tax of it. So if you can kind of just wrangle the horses and bring everything down, uh, build up a perpetual harvest, uh, those people are going to be handing out your business cards. Very true. I agree that I think it's good to, there is no, I, I have done both. Well, actually I can't say I've done both. Yes. Uh, well, pretty much all the grows I've ever worked at were all hydro to say or hydro light <laughs> uh cocoa is what they were uh the wholesale grow that i used to run and work with uh it with all cocoa and the the one i did before i uh got laid off there because of covid there that was all cocoa also and uh the very first job I ever worked at was actually with a hydroton grow a clay pellet they grew it. Um, but yeah, it it hydro is definitely an interesting one to work with, and I think it's very. I think you're absolutely correct when you said that. That I think it's very important that people, if you grow with soil, you know how to grow with hydro, and vice versa because you don't know it all and there's something that might work really well in hydro that you might be able to actually even apply to the, uh <clears throat> while working with soil but just in a different manner but the same principle that is totally totally adaptable i think honestly and yeah it, exactly. it definitely is yeah i've even um i still have my old you know hydro instruments and tools you know ph meter ec meter you know nutrient strength you know and i use those i transition those into my natural farming inputs and you know all those things have a nutrient strength to them so that hydro experience i mean it, it was something that also um, i carry forward to natural you know natural farming living soil you know just by you know the way i do things so you know you're right man it's may it just makes you a well-rounded you know you know grower you know what i mean you kind of seen it all you know and i kind of um fell into that i went you know worked for a company and they had organics in the name and i was thinking okay soil and all that good stuff it ends up it was a, a cocoa deal with you know drain to waste so you're basically mix, mixing up nutrients every day flooding the plants and then that goes right down the drain you know what i mean like that's one of the most wasteful um <clears throat> methods there is to grow so that the, you know you got to watch that and and that was a you know that was kind of a shitty experience for the short time i was there for number one i was planning to do natural you know living soil type system uh number two then the, just the only 
to be live, working at a place that's called organics, but then kind of technically, you know, wasn't salt, but it was salt, you know, it was all those mixture of concoction of, you know, everything every day. So it wasn't great. You know what I mean? So past experiences make you better, you know, moving forward. So, you know, it just makes me a better grower now. At least I understand all different kinds of, you know, uh, uh, systems and also now like we make you know brewers you know you still use those same hydro principles you're still moving water we're still using water we're doing pumps we're moving things around so you know to me it's all kind of well makes you well-rounded um obviously living soil is the way to go uh real quick it made me think of something where people i've seen a lot of people get burned is um like if, you're, if you are transitioning to something and they want you to sign like ndas and non-competes and stuff like that uh, that that is warranted, but make sure that it's like a year or less, or if they're somehow committing to you, maybe that's two years. Uh, we've seen people where they were talking like five years, where you can't, you basically can't go grow for anybody else because supposedly you learned all this company's trade secrets when in reality you're the one bringing all the trade secrets. So there's a lot of lawyer speak and a lot of like uh, misdirection, if you will. So they'll say certain things, and if you don't read that or really understand what you're doing, you could sign. Uh, something where you're just working for an employee. I'm, I'm sorry, you're you're just an employee for an employer, uh, and you're kind of like you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, so you don't really understand things, I guess, at first. And they can really take advantage of that, and and you know, pick your brain, kind of soak up all that information for a few months or maybe even a year or so, and then kind of just move on, move to a different direction. And now you can't work for anybody else, uh, and that to me is fucked up, man. Uh, so just double check that kind of stuff. I don't know why I, I really thought about that, but I hope if somebody's about to sign a contract or something, you you hear that real quick, uh, double check all of those stuff on how long they're saying. Um, if they're asking you to sign NDAs and non-competes, you know, how long are they asking you for that? Because if it is that long, I don't think that job's worth it. You know, again, that's going to be up to you, but five years is a long time, especially if this is what you want to do in life. Mm-hmm. Damn, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Yeah, I've seen that before. I've actually refused jobs for seeing. I'm like, nope, thank you. I just, nope, I don't need this job. But I haven't seen that in a while. I mean, I haven't seen that since like 2014. People were pulling that crap out. And I was like, no, I do not agree with that. But that's actually a good point, though, too. Exactly. Yeah, five years, man. That's I've seen that. They, yeah, I've seen five years. And even in construction now, they have um, a lot of companies have one year because some of these trades are so specialized. That's fair, I think. Yeah. You're going a, year is... a year, but don't try to take away my half a decade from me. <laughs> exactly. Up. That's just bad business there. Yeah. So, yeah, like, trust me, this is coming from experience. You're going to be bright eyed and bushy tailed if you've never done that before. So you're just excited to be like, yeah, yeah, this sounds, sounds great. You know, and usually this is when they uh, are kind of whining and dining you, you know, you're not usually just sitting at some random table and they're talking about this. You're usually at a kind of a decent or high end restaurant, depending on the bankroll of the company. Um, and don't lose yourself on that too, or giving up so much information um, when you're at that dinner. Cause you got to re realize if they're willing to take you to dinner, then you have something special and you don't want to just give that shit away and you want to make them earn that. So um, that that's, that's all you got really. So once the, once you give them the whole little thing, uh, that whole egg, they're not going to value you anymore. You will see it for yourself. If, if you do enough of these where they just look at you like, Oh wow. And they, and they really want to run with you. They picked up your brain, you know, for months, maybe even a year, and then they're on to something else. And then they, they just don't, don't value that and then if you couldn't work for a few years or something like that you're going to feel defeated i promise so just be just be mindful of that and again find passive income uh something that Jessica was even saying like on behind the scenes when you do get that opportunity you learn real quick that it's not necessarily like a glamorous life especially on the commercial side of things uh doing drain to waste even marco i mean you're, you're basically like a water boy you ph stuff all day i would imagine that probably takes hours upon hours to get done uh you got a labor force that's just barely wanting to be there um most companies they don't want to operate that way but most companies kind of do operate that way there's there's very very few that seems like there's positivity all the way down to the trimmer and like right. Justin was saying, you know, you're going to you're going to 
that's where you start. It's like being a bus boy if you eventually want to be a bartender. Um, there's no college really for that. I mean, they're kind of silly if there, there are bartender colleges, but those are kind of silly. Like bartending comes from experience. It's more like how quickly can you make drinks because you make that place money uh, and you don't necessarily need to go to school for that. And with cannabis, because of the laws and stuff, it's the same way somewhat in my opinion with that. If you have the skill set and the experience, you can show people they don't give a fuck what school you went to. They'll give you an opportunity because they just want to have success. They want to have perpetual harvest that are doing well. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot more of the suits are starting to see that the successful individuals around the country that are doing this and with the living soil and hitting like 30 cycles, 32 cycles and all this like, you know, almost inconceivable stuff just a few years ago. Uh, they're starting to see, wow, if we if we found a team like those like those teams that we are mentioning, uh, we could we could find success uh, as an investment group. Um, and I hope in time that, again, that's why our community does this each and every week, because those opportunities, I hope, hope trickle down to you guys, uh, especially the ones that are hungry enough uh, to go out and get them or talk to the suits. You know, you guys can also kind of create meetings for yourself. Um, and once you have a little bit of you know, tenacity, uh, some of those individuals would potentially hear you out. You know, if you're if you're a trimmer, but you could solve uh, uh, my example was I was able to to show them that their their seeds didn't have enough light. So they were spending all this money on seeds and like, you know, the seedlings were like this fucking big, uh, which is obviously horrible or just falling over in general. So little things that you would think even in a basement grower. Um, well, that was a long, long time ago. So I don't know. I don't think people are making those kind of mistakes anymore. But you can find where people are making mistakes, find a way to speak up, um, you know, do it. Almost you have to do it politically. Right. Because if you go after somebody in front of the owner, uh, they never forget that. Mm -mm. So, you know, and that's how whoever's at the top, whoever's the quarterback is constantly feeling like in, on that team that everybody wants his job or her job. So that's what I meant by if you can build a team and it'd be a living soil and you guys really succeed where, uh, you know, the, the Cantwells and the Steenslands and are, are really taking a commercial side of things where it's unbelievable success. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is that is the potential of our community to take it to where like now there are so many jobs that are in high demand or at least starting to become in high demand because the money starts to see that long term this is the best play and i promise you the the bright minds of well-funded companies will listen to this kind of stuff and if you deliver it in a certain way and articulate in a certain way they'll listen to you uh because they understand that you know they've probably seen a lot of grows and a lot of these do fail uh, even the good ones and i remember the gentleman you were working for i think i met him at that uh little camp out event thing uh, he seemed like he was a good hearted individual that just couldn't keep up with like the complexities of w the way Colorado was about laws and uh, dispensaries and the way things were kind of grown and the whole gamut, really. Well, actually, what what took us down there was uh, Sweet Leaf. You remember what happened with Sweet Leaf, right? Oh, uh, let's let I do. And let's let the audience know that they were uh, like basically real quick. They were a major player in the industry. Yeah. Uh, they were basically buying up all the wholesale in the in the state and then flipping it at their dispensaries. Yeah, and they got arrested for selling because in Colorado, it's law that you cannot purchase more than one ounce of cannabis, uh, flower cannabis per day from any one dispensary. You can get so what they had happened was they had undercover uh, people coming in and purchasing cannabis, like an ounce of cannabis, like four or five times within the day. And I think at one point it was like three times in an hour. Uh, all And they kept sending people in and they busted them for it. <clears throat> and there was something else I can't remember they got in trouble for too, that they owed uh, uh, the wholesaler there a lot or that I worked with. Yeah, you met uh, that you met there that I was working with. They he they owed the company so much money that they went out of business because it was too much of a loss. That was it was it was way too much money. It was it was it's not and it was on a net ten, and we had a net five right after that. They're like, oh okay, we're gonna take this and 
then like a day and a half later, it's like, oh, we're going to take this too. We're going to give you a net five on this one. So that they'll pretty much almost be exactly the same time for product. We're like, okay, this is pretty much all our product here. And then they got busted, went out of business and never got the money. So the company went out of business. That's and tried and true. Like, that always happens. If someone doesn't have money today, they're not going to have money tomorrow. Nope. Uh, and that's the yeah. way it is. Right there. Uh, selling to dispense, or if you're wholesale selling to dispensaries, uh, keep them on that. <laughs> Make sure you get that money. Take thirty percent down. That's what. That's my suggestion. Thirty percent down, and we'll do a net ten for the rest. Now, the sweet leaf thing yeah, is that- another good example of um, realizing that the feds are going to let you think that you're getting away with things. Like this was again, I think maybe a year, year and a half long. An investigation so they were letting mm-hmm. sweetleaf had i believe like 21 or 22 locations so this was a major operation and these people were allowing what was known in the hood as looping so what you would do is you'd basically looping. talk to somebody and say like hey you know you, well basically you wouldn't let them know the price that you were getting but you say like hey i can get you whatever these these strains for you uh it, between two and 250 and then hopefully you're paying like one or 150 and so you could just sit there all day, uh, just like kind of like back in the day um, and just have a, a variety of plugs, if you will, that you can walk into, buy an ounce, get your money back with relatively, you know, within, you know, an hour or so. And so from a street type level, that is quick, quick money. Like if I can if I can buy something at 50 and get 100 and then go buy something at 100 and get it at 200 and continue down that line. Um, that's why so many people were attracted to that. There were so many people that were coming out of state to be, a, um, to, you know, basically experience it, that, that, that was even happening. Um, and it was weird to the community here in Denver that they allowed it to happen for so long because all of that stuff was being spread nationwide. People were even driving like gummies and, you know, you name it, what was being sold, it was being delivered. Um, so that, that was pretty interesting to me. Uh, and, 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 the looping aspect was also kind of silly because uh, for what I understand from a legislative standpoint, uh, they could have shut that down pretty quick, uh, mm-hmm. but they allowed the case to build up, I guess, to to really punish them for choosing to, to go that route because they argued uh, basically they were kind of like skirting the line with it. And um, man, it, uh, it it changed the 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 landscape of cannabis in Colorado. I think permanently, would would you say, Justin, with the amount of money or amount of product that they were moving? Oh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, it did. It it definitely, we were not the only company, or the company I worked with was not the only one that suffered this happening too, unfortunately. They, they fucked over a lot, a lot of people. Around what year was this going down? So we're in like 2015 or 16? Yeah. It was really interesting because they also uh, they had their managers of each store. And at first, the feds were like obviously squeezing them. So, you know, you got 22 people. I would think 21 of them squealed and told everything. Right. So they had all this information on them and they were uh, threatening them with all these like actual like federal crimes. I believe most of that stuff was dropped and they just kind of went after the big wigs. But again, it's the thing of greed, man. If they wouldn't have done that, they still would be rocking today. I bet they'd have like 44 locations because people just knew. Well, people knew Sweet Leaf like around the country. Like you could go to, you know, a variety of different places and people knew about Sweet Leaf uh, because of that. And they knew that they could fly into Colorado and drive back with uh, a little truckload and and make a, a nice little living for themselves for at least for a year, year or so. Mm. Mm-hmm. but you always get caught that's the thing there's yeah. no longevity we want we want you guys to have fine longevity passive income yeah. things that start small and build up as a snowball slow grind starting out slow grind and letting it build up amen that fast grind leads to nothing but but bad things let it grow itself you know let your business you know grow itself if you if your business is shoveling driveways right well you shovel enough by hand until you can afford a piece of equipment 
And when you get that equipment, then your money doubles and triples and, and it multiplies. So that's just called reinvesting in yourself and letting the letting the business buy that equipment. Don't go in your pocket and go in debt for it. We buy it when it's time. You know, best time to buy a tool is when you need it. That's when I was told. You know, you don't buy it before you need it and you, you don't borrow it. You buy it when you need it. So just invest in yourself. And that's kind of the theme we've been on for a while here. Um, what kind of um, back to that papaya punch, Jeremy? So I know you that's a cut. Is, do you know if that's available anywhere? And have you been um, working that and doing anything with, um, you know, creating anything off of that as far as seeds or, or what do you what's your plan? Oh, great question there. Um, it is not available anywhere. I can. Uh, it's uh, just clone. We're giving it out to people, though. Uh, my friend Nick. Uh, has been saying he wants to get it out to more people. I just gave actually today some cuts of it to a good friend of mine. And uh, I'm going to give some to a coworker too. We're going to trade some uh, cuts here. He's got a really nice banana punch. That he's nice. Gonna give me it's got amazing terpene profile. Blows me away. Very similar uh, to the. Uh, papaya punch actually which is interesting are they related at all or just happen to have that same kind of profile that's what i'm i gotta find out from him i gotta get some more information on this strain from him so i can find that out because i'm really curious i'm like i think they might be related <laughs> um so yeah i'm we're trying to get it out to people uh brian if you want to cut i can give you one um i'm retired uh, i'll take brian's hook, cut you hook me up yeah, you hook me up uh, with some ice and pies. That's what I want. Yeah, hook up Marco, man. I, and I really appreciate that because yeah. uh, we'll cuts it. can we'll change your it. life. I mean, if you if you find uh, certain cuts, I mean, you can talk about more like the hood and street. People will seek you out. Um, and, you know, there's there's all the work is done pretty much when you when you have a cut. And so if you're taking it to the next level, putting in the microbial life and stuff and that you might you might have found a gem that you personally just kind of took to the next level so your network is your net worth uh, i believe that i've learned that later in life um you know if you're hanging out with individuals that aren't doing anything um that's what you seem to end up doing if you're hanging out with individuals even if you guys are enjoying life a little bit uh but if you're hanging and talking with successful individuals or people that are going somewhere sometimes that's even the the kind of cool spark is when everybody in the room is kind of broke but hungry and are really talking about ways to legal ways to make money with you know with each other or find ways. That's the part that I, I really enjoy and that whole like enjoy the journey and stuff. Uh, because once you start to achieve those certain things, I guess then it's more just you know how many things could you accumulate? You know, I mean once once you have all your basic needs covered and life is good and you, you feel it, I, I do think then that just comes more to like greed. So you know, kind of fuck all that. Uh, let's find other ways to enrich our lives. Find experiences. Um, you know, Marco, I hope as, as my daughter gets a little bit older here that I can, you know, link up with you in some other state. I mean, I just enjoyed kind of visiting. I'm going to make sure I don't eat from, a, you know, that weird ass truck. So I'll get sick. Uh, yeah. You know, the whole night was kind of like, oh, man, I'm laying in the grass. But, yeah, I enjoy I enjoy seeing kind of the still enthusiasm in other states because it kind of died down in Colorado. Uh, you know, you. you like in fairness, Justin, wouldn't you say? I mean, the, the cups are still fun, but they're not uh, they're not like what they were back. Like I would say, even like twenty fifteen, and, and probably a couple of years afterwards, where um, it seemed like the whole city seemed to show up. Yeah, the community definitely uh, slowed down quite a bit in a certain sense. It need to get that spark coming back here. What do y'all attribute that to? Is it just that everybody's so used to it, it's legal, everybody's just, just kind of doing their own thing? You think that, you know, what do y'all think? Yeah, I think uh, people are just kind of over it as uh, nostalgia, and now it's just a routine thing. Uh, I guess like kind of like alcohol. Like some people just drink on the weekends. Some people just smoke on the weekends. Right. Um, and we talked about this before, like trends with the market. Uh, I do think if you're if you're in like a bigger city, if you can turn your flower into um, some kind of like nine to five type product, 
uh, that people are going to buy of that community, um, there's going to be, you're going to probably find success, especially if you can figure out carts and uh, not have them leak or anything. And there's you know a variety of companies that have figured that out, so you can kind of buy their stuff, re, you know, find out which cart they're using. Uh, so there's a lot of ways I think that you can um, maybe for you guys that are getting into this at the beginning feel way behind. That might not necessarily be true because there's so many companies with a lot of money that are still doing goofy stuff or creating, you know, there's still people talking about creating stuff and, oh, they're going to do dissolute. You know, to me, that's kind of silly. I mean, it's kind of going backwards, right? Yeah. Like it's almost like you got to bite your lip not to like smile where they're like, what? You know, I mean, (laughs) you know, there's just trends in the market and some some people realize that and some don't. So this community understands that. So don't sell yourself short. Uh, and if people are trying to pick your brain on stuff, you know, allow it, but be guarded. Always be guarded. Um, even if it's somebody that you kind of even know, it's just sad what people will do for money or the illusion of money. Oh, I wanted to pick, we'll say one more thing on that kind of where you say where, uh, where you go to that dinner at the table where they roll out the red carpet for you. And when you were saying, don't give up too much of your info, one of the things that you do give up, though, is make sure you tell them and let them know, because you already know the specs on their building, right? Say they got 10 rooms. You already know how much they can produce. Let them know you know that, you know, let them know that I know that every cycle we're going to rip this much. We're going to have to prepare to trim this Mm -hmm. much, dry trim and, you know, the whole process. But those are the things you let them know, you know what I mean? So then they can say, okay, this guy's on his game. He's not just some dummy. We can't just pull the wool over his eyes. You know, to me, though, that's important kind of going in as well. Fabulous points. And if they're setting deadlines, hey, we're going to give you this, we're going to do this for you, and then they don't, and then it happens again, trust me that they have no intention of of fulfilling that. Right. Um, but some people will and some people work for those. And, you know, there are companies out there, I promise, that are trying to do it right. It's just really hard to get in there or, or you know, behind the scenes, know which ones to, to go for. So, again, community helps, um, you know, even trimming. You probably learn a lot because a lot of those individuals would have worked at so many different places uh, that you could find out real quick uh, which places are probably legit in your city. Um, so, again, it's it, Man, in a weird way, it's kind of like, you know, you're planted into if you are planted into a brand new city, like, the you know, your world is your oyster. You just got to figure it out. Um, there's there's so many cannabis opportunities where, that people squander. They don't show up for work. Uh, they, you know, no call, no show kind of stuff. Um, and, and people get fed up with that, even if they are, a, you know, a talented grower, if they're not showing up and the owner has to show up to let everybody into the building, you know. I promise you, if they're deep pocket individuals, they don't want that. They got their own stuff that they got to deal with. So they, they want to have these businesses that are pretty much sustainable or they got somebody in charge that's making it sustainable to where that person is the contact point. So if you can achieve that or fulfill that for people or see a need, uh, those are the opportunities that go a long way. And I, I personally did that for myself when I saw this guy thought he was like some kind of rock star. And you walk into the grow and like half the plants are on the ground. You know, I mean, that's not anybody knows that that's not right. So sometimes there's opportunity where if you just politely kind of just start to show that, you know, maybe a little bit more of what's going on, uh, their ears are going to perk up because they're the ones paying the bills. And if they are in a hydroponic setup, uh, they don't have that that high level team. uh, More than likely, they're barely making it or or slowly losing money uh, because the the hydro setup is just so expensive to run and um, like little things and you know not not always but little things seem to happen more with that where like you, you got to wake up in the middle of the night somebody's got to run over there uh, where with a living soil system once it's dialed in in my opinion hand water not necessarily using all those especially at first uh, you're not going to see those problems um, yeah. unless you use unless you use kind of like those blue mats and stuff and you got to kind of almost embrace your team and realize that as we dial these in uh, it's going to be potentially a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You ever use the blue mats, Justin? No, I have not. I don't want to like, you know, it, it, it's always, it, it's also like, you know, the, the, the operator error too. Right. But it comes down to your environment and kind of understanding things. And 
there's just so much to learn. So uh, starting off and, and just tried and true, uh, I hope that maybe Justin gave you that opportunity where now you'll at least experience because you can be like, hey, I can buy a couple of those. I see those bag soils uh, at my local you know, store, even the high end garden centers that that grow like orchids and stuff. They have Fox Farm there. Mm -hmm. um, a variety of things. They have Aurora Organics there. Um, that some of them even have that 707 mix was like the old school, like gorilla style where you just threw the bags <laughs> in the woods and put the plant in the bag. The camouflage and, bag. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's opportunity for you to find experience doing this. And, you know, Justin's obviously, hopefully inspiration for you guys that you don't have to have a, um, you know, well-oiled machine uh, to to grow cannabis, uh, high-end cannabis. You know, you could just be a, a, at your home uh, doing your own thing, just putting in the work and putting out, you know, the heat that obviously uh, an entire um, people on Saturday were loving the most. And they were literally, there were two tents behind us. Our little mm -hmm. tent was right in front of one of them. And they were just passing out the cannabis that everybody had. And then you had these like uh, little wooden tokens and that's how people were judging it. So oh, okay. uh, just pretty interesting, you know, like, that people are allowed to smoke it. Cause sometimes it's not that way, you know, seems like the, the organizer kept all the cannabis. Yeah. It's like, where are all these, where's all the entries? I bet everybody put an ounce up. Yeah. You know? That's 48 ounces. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely, man. I, I like the fact that um, just like you said, man, a working guy and an average guy that's on top of his game, on top of your grind, can get in there and beat the big boys and just rocking the soil, the fox farm in his own little mix, you know, and that, and that shit can win. It can be fire, you know, so it's a lot more about the dedication and a lot of the part of it. Uh, the, I think the big part of it is obviously the drying and the, and the, the attention after the grow. Cause you know, during the grow, it's kind of easy. You no, know, you're not touching anything. You know, everything's just there maintaining now chopping. Oops. Drop that butt on the floor. Oops. Drag that in the, in, in the soil, you know, oops, bump that against the, um, the closet, walking it over there. Cause I cut the branches too big. Like those are where you can really start degrading your cannabis. And then obviously the dry, not knowing your humidity and, you know, not knowing your environment can, can just degrade you on down to where you took a very good strain and turned it into what Brian likes to call that booth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, how many of us helped the homie out that was trimming and you were like, all right, where do you want me to put this? And he's like, oh, we're just putting it on the floor. And it was oh like a God. rug floor, like dirty <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> so yeah, take pride in what you're doing. At what least get a new tarp. <laughs> Hey, we need, um, I would love to do that, Dogs Days Gardens, uh, but we need Sticky Lungs for that. So you need to uh, DM Sticky Lungs um, because uh, he is the key holder for that. Mm, we need it. All right. All right, Justin. So you, you've promoted... Uh, you know, some, some genetics, um, you know, there's some tried and true, the Onai has been around. Um, are there some other breeders that you've messed around with that you think, you know, Hey, if you're newer to this, you should kind of run these genetics. The money's a little bit better spent than maybe some other ones people might've potentially been looking at purchasing. A uh, good question there. Um, I would go with. Hmm, good question. What would I go with? Ivory Genetics, I would, I would suggest uh, Ross to Jeff. He's got really good stuff that he grows or he creates and produces. Um, I would go with uh, Crockett Farms. I really like their stuff. Really, Seed Junkie is another one. Seed Junkie, anything that Seed Junkie produces is fucking fire. Sorry, it's fire. It, it's amazing. I keep hearing that's uh, what I keep seeing winning awards and also just showing up like super dang people are growing out is seed junkie genetics i can't say anything specifically of what but i'd look into seed junkies line if you're looking for the fire that's something you're going to more likely find within a pack a good keeper that you'll be happy with uh again i read genetics uh Ross jeff has got some amazing crosses that he's working on and he's made um that are available absolutely also 
would highly recommend him. Um, and that's, I can't really say anybody else directly. Uh, I would more direct somebody if they're, if they're looking for something specific, then I would say look at this breeder or look at that breeder. Uh, compound genetics is not bad. I like some of their stuff. They're okay. Um, uh, Masonic is not bad. He, he's been, he's got an interesting breeding style. Um, he's got good prices on his, his seeds. So if you're looking for bulk and you really want to try growing a bunch of variety of stuff, I would definitely suggest Masonic seeds. Um, hey, yeah, hey awesome. could you allow, what do you mean by that? Um, on his growing style is a little bit different. Oh, he, uh, he just uh he likes to he breeds all this stuff outdoors out in his back or out in his grow area okay um uh and he just lets it kind of free float kind of open know. pollination and then selects out of the open pollination yes. okay okay that's kind of dope too i like that but it's good it's nothing wrong with it it's good it um I like controlled pollination personally. That's just me. But that, and that, and again, nothing against the sun. He 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 grows some fire stuff. Super, super Is that fire. just so you can um, kind of lock in and confirm what you got a little bit more? Yeah, just because my only concern is that that you get a lot of cross pollin. You can get cross pollination accidentally if you're outdoors, if because you, pollen can travel over a thousand miles away from its source, mm. and could be somebody's hemp or some some deer that just let some bag seed just blow out some pollen there and didn't realize it or didn't care, um, and that could travel and hit your plant too. Not that it would affect it really that much, but or would make a big difference, I think, because it'd be so sparse and so few, unless it was like literally your next door neighbor. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, but it's just nothing wrong with it like I, said, I i i commend him because it's actually a great way he's able to produce a lot of good seeds uh, a lot of new crosses and uh able to produce them easily with with the open pollination that we can do outside which is super smart absolutely brilliant nice and um, uh oni and masonic were like uh you know you always saw them together so i think they probably picked their each other's brains for a while um, you know, obviously trading genetics and stuff. Uh, yeah. So there's a variety of fantastic breeders, you know, it's really more, you got to put in the work because uh, almost everybody, you know, if, if they're buying their seeds, then they, you know, they feel a certain way about that breeder. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they always kind of tell the truth about that breeder or, um, so, you know, you want to, you want to do your work. Um, and if the, you know the population is there people are buying the work uh the hype is there uh some people buy in and they want to be a part of it and i totally get that part um and then the other part i think especially with branding is if you're doing the work yourself finding your own stuff uh, longevity is there uh you you know the gentleman i think he's he's definitely your boy uh justin uh frosty mcnuggets uh, i was able to uh, hang out with him i haven't seen him since you know probably before COVID. And he had stuff like this jaw awe or something that was just, it reminded me of like really the old school kind of, of cannabis, just out of this world. Um, and he's kind of the, like that, that Turk collector, if you will, like you, you were kind of saying where people are going to get to a point where it's just like, what the fuck is this? It's like the pine saw stuff. I love that kind of smell and, and, it's 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 true gas that kind of like you know you only need to hit it maybe once an hour every two hours and you were just feeling uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I gave him actually the jaw Kush cut that he grew up. So the jaw Kush. Yeah, that, where did that come from? It, uh, it came from a, a dispensary, it's a very first dispensary I worked at, uh, or grow I should say I worked at. Uh, you should give that came, one to Marco. That one, that one I don't. Anymore. I actually oh, have seeds. Like see. seeds. Was that old school? Uh, Kush Kush shit never lasts, bro. It's a uh, light of jaw crossed with OG OG Kush. Mm. 
Man, there's something to that. If you like the the real gas, the gas, the pine salty gas. Pine salt's fun. Duke has one pine bomb that's kind of like that. Okay. Just, kinda, just got that like pine salt reminiscent. Yeah. Uh, sure. And then um, Sas- Sasquatch has one, uh, but I think he was the only one that had that. Like he bought like all seven seeds or something, but he was uh, for a while there flipping something that just reeked like pine salt. And just as soon as you hit it, it felt like a, you know, a rocket ship. And for to feel that on cannabis, I mean, it's usually pretty rare if you're like a daily, you know, you smoke daily or something. Right, right. I think that's it, man. That's my goal. I want that the terps, man. That's where it's at. I mean, that's that's how you get people to remember you. You know, yeah. Because mm-hmm. think of all yeah. that sixty-three entrance. Um, you know, that's that's a lot of people, obviously, and. You know, how do you distinguish yourself out of that if everybody's growing even great cannabis? You know, you got to have something that right. people remember. Yeah, and to be remembered, that that papaya punch has to be loud. It must be. It must taste. Got to have that good. funk. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That flavor. Good stuff. We got any questions, Ken's? We're getting on past six thirty now. How are we looking? Actually, uh, we got a couple of questions and uh, almost a statement, but uh, you guys are are talking such a a fantastic show. Everybody's so intent to listen to you guys. They're not asking questions because you guys are explaining it all so well today. It's like I got I don't have much to do back here. Come on, guys. I'm I'm almost half bored here. Come on. Um, So I like to point out dog days here. Uh, Brian, this was kind of a, uh, you were talking to him about this. So, uh, he's going to reach out. Ricky. And, uh, you guys can set that up, man. I think a lot of people would be amazed to go there and, uh, and have that happen. Yeah. Like, like I said, man, you're always going to pay respect to him. There's no way that I would do that without him. So yeah, if he yeah. wants to do it, then yeah, that's, but he's also a busy guy trying to you know, find his passion and stuff. And I respect that too, because I want to see him succeed. He's another one of those that's, that's so brilliant that I think uh, he sometimes maybe sells himself short uh, when he goes to some of these job interviews and stuff. So uh, lo- I love you sticky buddy. I, I hope uh, that you continue to uh, find your way, man. Uh, Cause it is rough out there when you have <clears throat> been kicked a few times with the commercial stuff. And that was kind of your dream. You know, myself included, like that was kind of the dream. And then when you're supposedly living the dream and you realize that this is not I don't have any control. These people tell me what to do in almost a weird way, you know, like they hold so much over you if they're if they're if that's how they kind of operate, you know, where it's like, oh, we need you to work on Saturday, you know, and if you're on salary, like, what are you going to do? Fucking show up on Saturday. Right. So they, they learn to see how much you're willing to kind of just let them push on you. And I've seen that at every place. And that might just be like a business tactic that they teach in school that I didn't learn. But it does seem like they kind of like press the employees to see what they'll put up with. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So again, just remember that, you're, you know, you're trying you're trying to get somewhere. So if where you're at sucks. You know, hey, it might take a few months to get to somewhere else. But that's that's part of it, man. You know, and yeah. it's commitment and never stop. Just keep driving forward day after day and you will succeed. You just, you never stop and don't give up. Mm-hmm. So I had a question real quick for Justin. Um, you know, what, what was the genetics that you were running in the grow off? Cause I, from what I understand the way that operates is they give you the genetics and then your talent and skill set shine through because technically everybody has the same cut. Hmm. Yes. Um, for this round, I'm not sure what we uh, we have right now. Uh, you start off, everybody gets the same cut uh, or same plant, uh, cut of the same plant, excuse me. And then you have a deadline to turn in a sample. And then between from when you get that cut and when that sample doesn't need to be turned in for testing, is up to you when you want to flower it, when you want to veg it, how long you want to veg it, what you want to do. If you want to clone it, then grow it out from a clone, whatever. It, it, it's your choice at that point, which is really great. Uh, for the 2021 grow off, for Colorado grow off, 
Uh, the strain was Hype Train from Nerd's Genetics. Uh, and so shout was, out to Robbie. Robbie owns uh, Nerd's yes. Genetics, and there's another good one in the camp. That, oh, that's the one. Thank you. And going back to seed pur purchase, I apologize, Robbie. I am a jerk for not putting you also in that category. He's got some super fire that's definitely worth growing out and checking out. He actually, uh, I purchased a couple strains from him earlier this year that he said, literally, this is so strong that I cannot smoke it. I can grow it out, but I won't smoke it. I just give it away to everybody else. I was like, what? And he's like, it's too strong for me to smoke. And I was like, I'm like, you're crazy. That can't even be possible. And he's like, yep. So, yeah, Robbie is, is the man. He's great. Been growing some amazing genetics. Won many awards himself. Um, highly recommend Nerd's Genetics for seeds if you're a new grower. All right, so back to the grow off. It was uh, Nerd's Genetics Hype Train, and I won second place for best terpenes. Missed first place by less than a quarter of a percentile of a ter of terpenes. Well, that's close. Sorry, who was um, the breeder of that? It was it was Nerd's Genetics, and it was just his cross. It wasn't it wasn't a collab or anything. His, yeah, it was his cross. Uh, hype train. Hype train. So, did you get to see all the different entrants, uh, Robbie? And if so, how how much variation were was there, and were you surprised at how much difference in the different ways they were grown? I, I would. I did do a lot of. I just. I'm nosy, kind of say. I'm, I'm very curious. I should say. I was curious to see what the other contestants were growing. <laughs> right. Instagram. And not, and this is the interesting thing. Not everybody's consistent. Sorry, consistent with posting their grow of, of what stage they're in and what's going on with their their plant and the grow off. Because one person might post like three times during the whole whole thing. They're like, oh yeah, I got my clone. Hey, look, it's 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 growing. Hey, look, it's flowering, and, that, and that's all you ever see. You never hear anything else. Uh, but it was interesting watching uh, for with the nerds genetics because there was a couple of hiccups that happened during the uh, the clones of, of getting to us and a lot of people had some issues with their clones so it was really interesting watching everybody start off with their clones and what their growing environment was what they were using to treat their clones with uh, when they took them home and then how they were going from there uh, but yeah, it was, very, it was a lot of fun because I was really interested in just looking at different people's uh, growing techniques, what their lighting was, what the condition their plants looked like, um, what uh, what information that they did divulge any, uh, which not that people didn't divulge, divulge information, but not people didn't go into much detail, you know, like, oh, yeah, just feeding it uh, veg newts or flower newts, whatever. Or gave it some tea, or you know, whatever it be at the moment. Um, but it was very interesting watching everybody's plants uh, develop and grow. Some were better than others. Some were way better than mine. Uh, not that mine was that great, um, uh, but it was a good plant. I mean, don't get me wrong; it was not a bad plant. But there were some that blew mine out of the water. I'm like, holy crap! I can definitely tell your lighting and whatever your grow medium is just making this plant super happy. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, Really enjoyed it. I got to, uh, we got a little poster at the end that had a picture of everybody's bud that uh, completed the contest there. So I looked at all those comparatively and it looks pretty much like most of everybody else. Hey, do you want to turn your camera re on real quick and, and show the hardware so everybody sees, yeah. you know, without a video or vi photo didn't happen? Yeah, true, true. That, eh? There we go. So again, shout out to Nerds Genetics. That's uh, you know, if you if you believe in like voting for people with your money, that's somebody to bet on. Yes, definitely, definitely. And you got it under the Doctor Grow. Nice. Yeah, put it under the Doctor Grow, the company. Well, uh, yeah, that helps when you're trying to get students. Yeah, and uh, your other, what was your other hardware? Do you have that right there? The one you won over the weekend. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you know that 
what I do like about it is they, uh, you know, they, they give you a piece of hardware that that's cool. You know, I mean, it's something that you, you know, it's a trophy, not just. That's nice. Sometimes it's kind of seems like an afterthought of the trophy aspect. So yeah, badass that it's it's that big for third. Um, and first place was you know, just as cool, you know, of, of a, a size and everything. So that's yeah. something that that I think, especially when you first get into it, you know, you just really want your peers justin to to like what you're doing or you know you're, you're all trying to figure it out together um but then to have it to where complete strangers are smoking your stuff and, and seeing that there's something special about what you're doing i mean i hope that this gives you the the confidence to just continue down that road man and, and find your little niche so that you you know you can do something with cannabis and find your passive income and the whole gamut because uh you deserve it, man. You were, I see you again I, at every little thing. You were there networking. Um, and again, genetics matter. You know, that's probably 60 percent of it if we're honest, you know, like just finding the the tried and true stuff that people have kind of already done the homework on um, it is a blessing if you're able to do that. And then in time, I think um, to kind of give back to the community for that. Uh, you need to pheno hunt yourself. Uh, what you know, once your skill set is there to really understand sometimes what you might potentially have. Because sometimes, man, I, I wish I would have kept a lot of the stuff that I was like, oh, I don't think that's. And then you have people calling back like a month or two later, like, D you don't have any of it. It's like, no, I didn't think anybody liked it. So yeah, yeah. Ja Kush. <laughs> yeah, bro. Whatever the Ja Kush, man. That shit was probably some of the gassiest stuff. And also, you know, your buddy uh, Frosty McNuggets has uh, has quite a talent for what he's doing. So his his yeah, stuff is uh, terpy terps, very terpy terps, saucy sauce style. <laughs> so did you give him any others genetics? Because I was able to smoke. Um, what was it? I think the Wi-Fi had the Wi-Fi OG and the GMO. I smoked the GMO. No, those, those were not mine. Just the uh, the jaw Kush was one that I gave him that. Well, that was my favorite and i was telling him that before i knew that it was yours thank you i have a cross of it with a san Fermoto that i'm going to be growing out here next uh after this pheno hunt that i have going on right now i have awesome. two strains that i'm work well three strains i'm working on right now currently testing one and two pheno hunts from the other but uh, i got some work i'm putting in right now but coming up soon i will definitely who created the that lightsaber? Because I, I hear that in crosses every now and then. Or it's like lightsaber with something. Yeah, Skywalker. Let's see. Let's do it. I think. I don't know. That's a good question. That one well, sure. whoever created that, there's there's something special to that, I think, too, Marco. Hmm. I'll keep your be looking out for that one for sure. Maybe that is just that extra little like gassy piney funk it had to it that little twist of flavor that you remember from back in the 80s that you've been looking for since then you uh, want back yeah i i don't know why that is but it is like you if you remember kind of smoking that stuff you you ha and you meet somebody that has something skunky it is almost like wow it's like uh listening to maybe your favorite song that you for maybe not favorite song but a song that you kind of forgot about and then you're like oh yeah this shit is pretty good um, and then from what I understand with the history of cannabis, a lot of that stuff was watered down genetics on purpose, because if you really had the skunky skunk in the like early nineties and stuff, you were getting busted left and right because the whole neighborhood would smell it. Mm -hmm. So there might be some, uh, some, you know, if, if your grandpa or your, your dad's got some, uh, seeds somewhere and you know, but I, I might pop those and kind of see, Hey, you might not know. You might find something that everybody's after to this day because they just can't find that that old Actually, old skunk. i think kevin jodry is supposed to be dropping a new strain of skunk um next year um and that's the rumor that i heard anyway uh, a super skunk or something that's the one he's been searching for for what 30 years now he's been trying to to find that that flavor and that strain and supposedly he's actually got it so it might be coming back soon mm. nice. well i would imagine if anybody had the connections to bring some of that super old stuff that was the lure you know i never even experienced the supposedly the old old stuff uh would be him for sure mm. so yeah um 
it's just cool that more and more individuals, even kind of like the soccer moms, maybe they don't smoke cannabis, but they don't necessarily see it as like some kind of like evil anymore. And now more individuals are able to kind of come out of the woodworks and find her old genetics or, hey, my uh, I got an old shoe box of stuff. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot of that kind of stuff, too, here in Colorado, where people yeah, are just, the- maybe also out of necessity because, you know, not everybody has the extra disposable income. So people that have been hoarding seeds, at least in our little network here, are actually starting to pop Sell their seeds because they can't. You know, there was no Indo Expo this year, so nobody was able to, you know, ridiculously <laughs> stock up on seeds. They probably won't even pop this year. Uh, so I hope some of that stuff comes back, Justin, because, again, Indo Expo, man, that was that was kind of like our Super Bowl that kicked off the, the whole year for people. And the breeders, uh, some of the ones that were there, I mean, they would be making a significant amount of money for themselves, and that just kind of went away. So, again, you got to find – even if you think this is going to last forever, you know, I don't, that, that doesn't mean that's why you got to have the octopus mentality. Um, you know, variety of ways to, to make income for yourself. Cause the ones that were hustling the Indo expo, I, <clears throat> I would imagine thought that that would last f- forever. Cause that, that seemed to be like the brand even nationally for uh, where the breeders went, you know, you could go to different expos, but if the breeders weren't there, hardly anybody showed up. I mean, there would be some people there, but you had the big names, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and, and, and truth be told, uh, when Masonic, especially at some of the, the Indo Expos, his line would literally take hours to, to go through and people were waiting. So I know people hate on him for certain things and I know people love him for certain things. So again, that's why we always try to stay as neutral about everything. It's on you to decide what work you want. What, in, what works for your environment? You know, yeah. what's your skill level at? You know, like yeah. if you can take a tried and true like like Justin has and, you know, from the homie love for the plant um, hooking you up with that and you know that that's from the homie, then you can kind of like really sit back at least when you first start out and know, OK, I don't got to worry about males. I know that I can, uh, from what I understand, this should be some really good stuff. So let's just get through the harvest. Let's make sure that I just produce something so that I got some money to do it again. Yeah. And then that's kind of how it, I mean, and honestly, is probably the, the, the best way to approach this with the minimal amount of risk is, is getting, you know, networking enough where you can just get a clone from someone um, and, and grow it out. And then on the flip side of that, you know, you really want to do your own homework so that you f- you can see such variance when you're pheno hunting. I think that experience alone allows you to start to see like, oh, wow, maybe there's there's problems in this pocket of the commercial facility when you fe- eventually get to the uh, you know, upper levels of cultivation. Yeah, I think clones are definitely a good um, asset. And there's some guys out there um, that you can trust with some good clones. Um, and get yourself started um speaking of masonic I'd, I'd like to try you know pop some of his seeds here eventually but i did get a cut of his that i'm going to be growing out uh, off his wilson everyone talks really highly of it so i'll be excited to check him out but um diversity of everything we always talk about diversity in our soil use a diversity of breeders try a lot of people's stuff you know until you find stuff that you really like and then kind of work with it i think it's kind of the key yeah, I think uh, that's, that is a very good key is and start from the bottom, work your way through, know every aspect, you know, from from popping seeds to drying and curing. So you create yourself as the most valuable asset for the overall company. And then that's how you get into management, because, you know, each step. But we do have a, a good question uh, from Nung Nug. Uh, how many days do you all like to dry a uh, full plant? Uh, I guess, unfortunately, these kind of questions are usually like, it depends. Um, There's a lot of variables with that. And it's going to really come down to your environment, your room, how able, how are you able to control that at like a very dialed in level? Or are you more like the rest of us that kind of are putting it in a closet and like just kind of praying and hoping that you're, you know, putting out product. So yeah, it depends on where you're at. Um, 
skill wise as well as like um, your build out. Yeah. Yeah, and being Justin, able you're... to control the, the vapor pressure deficit just like you are supposed to be doing in your grow, you need to recreate those uh, uh, heat and cooling and uh, uh, humidity to actually do it properly. If you can't create them, you're flying by the seat of your pants is basically what you're saying, Brian. Yeah, I mean, you're if you think that you can just like hang up your whole plant and in every – even every house in the same state, it's going to be the same. That's misthinking. And I know at the beginning, you kind of think that um, every every place is dialing it in, no matter where you're at. If you've dialed in your environment and then you're helping someone else out that even lives in the same neighborhood, it's going to be different. Um, you know, there's a again, there's a variety of reasons why that happens. So you got to just begin to understand that I need a skill set to be able to walk into almost any kind of place, even again, learning from veering off sometimes even to hydro and stuff, just understanding a variety of things. So I can walk into a room and realize, all right, here are some potential issues. These are things that are going on. Um, and I think that's going to elevate um, the potential for you to kind of get where you want to be. And um, I know Justin, uh, you know you're you're producing the hardware, man. You know you're you're bringing home things that uh, most people are, are trying to get, and you've done it twice, I think, within a year. So I think that speaks. What else do you need to say? You know, well, that's you, big you know, respect way. right there. <laughs> Especially when you're competing against commercial I, ones that uh, entered as well. So it speaks volumes. I, the the you can create fantastic medicine um, and even in the you know in your example here uh, you can just buy things that are kind of tried and true uh, play around with those recipes um, and then as you feel a little more confident uh, kind of play around with stuff on another level and I mean it, it, you kind of gave them a nice blueprint that is now I hope the audience sees is kind of backed by the fact that you won this past weekend because now they can play around with your recipe in a way, maybe like a sub cool recipe or something. It's like, okay, here's what I use. I've been doing pretty well with it. People ran with it. I hope today on obviously microcosm scale of that, people start to use Justin's recipe if you're brand new to this. And we'd love to have feedback on that uh, because he's obviously doing something right with that. Um, and Justin, I hope like if somebody had some questions or something, they could reach out to you because uh, more than likely, to be honest, you're going to, that's going to happen to you. Uh, but again, as Marco says, make sure they're intelligent questions. Like if it's an easy Google search, uh, you know, you might only get one or two questions from someone. So don't make them those kind of questions. Uh, and I can tell you from my own personal, I don't, I don't want you to ask me really basic things. Uh, that almost makes me feel like you're just lazy. You're like you're a lazy information yeah. gatherer. <laughs> Especially because you can find it on your phone. Right. The amount of time it took you to text me that or DM me that, you probably could have Googled that. And came back with a better question that I probably would be like, oh, that's, you know, and maybe gave you a, a, a thoughtful answer. Thank you. So, Justin, um, I'm going to ask you a question directly. Uh, do you actually have any suggestions on mini splits? Mm. Or do you even use a mini split, my friend? No? I don't okay. use one. So, I, unfortunately, I don't. Um, I would not be able to give good reference or advice unfortunately okay brian marco this one's thrown to you guys now let's see used them before yeah yeah and uh so we, you kind of in a way maybe we grew into it so we like had our little tents and we were doing our stuff and then we kind of built out the room we were using like a, a, a window ac that would then pump out into the the basement um terrible actually for the ac for the house um but you know we didn't know so we're, we're building that stuff out and then as things progressed uh sorry what was the the beginning part of that like what do you what he asked he's just asking how side. any experience with the mini, the mini splits yeah right. which right. one's best so we had problems with the the window part of it when it was like basically like pumping out of that room so it was basically a room within a room in the basement so we upgraded and used the windowsill and bought a, um, I, I believe the company was Mitsubishi uh, mini yeah. split system. Uh, that is a game changer for the basement grower. After we purchased that, 
Um, you know, you're going to have to pay somebody to install that. And I, I would I would do that. Um, that's money well spent. Um, but once everything is installed, uh, you now kind of have full control of your environment, if you will, for a small time farmer. The mini split is worth the environment or investment because now that environment in a way is a lot easier to be controlled. Uh, and you're going to see a dramatic difference in the overall health of your plants. Uh, I would imagine within just a few weeks where just everything seems to just be a little bit, you know, if you walk in and it feels muggy to you, best believe that's how it feels to the plants. You know, if you walk in, it's freezing, same thing, too hot, same thing. So to have the mini splits, especially the higher end ones, seem, you know, they're just a few buttons and you can do all kinds of stuff, uh, but it's not too advanced uh, so that the, you know, someone like me could operate it. Um, and then I, I guess my, my answer to that is mini splits are a game changer if you are a basement farmer. If you are growing in a tent, I don't necessarily think it's it's really worth the money. You can probably get by with a cheaper little AC unit until you got the money for it. If money's no, uh, well, money's always an object. But if, if, if it's an investment for you and, and you have the funds for it, a mini split is a game changer and is a must if you're trying to get to that next level. And, and also they, consider yeah. your mini split is also a uh, part of your dehumidification system as well. It does suck moisture out. Um, like uh, uh, shooting was uh, saying, I live in Miami and it's crazy humid most of the time. So a mini split makes even more sense in that kind of an environment. But having that control, guys, of your humidity, your temperature, it's it's a game changer. I've only ever grown inside and having that control is key to having success. But uh, I want to jump back to uh, another question. Um, this one may be more for Marco, but uh, is there such a thing as too much silica or if I use rice hulls and green sand? Mm, I use rice hulls. Um, <clears throat> roughly a third of my mix can be rice hulls. Um, I, I think there's forms of silica, which you can be too, you know, have too much, obviously too much sand in a soil mix in general is not going to be good. So you don't want a high ratio of that. If I want to add silica though, I shred up some bamboo and then top dress that onto my soil. That's kind of my, the way I go about it, but there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I'm, you know, I just try to keep it the natural way. Um, doing it with the bamboo, I can't overdo it that way. Um, because this, it's, that's relying on the soil shredders, breaking it down and then cycling in the soil the slow way. Now, if you're pouring silica products in, possibly, but, uh, you know, that's about what I know on it. Justin, you have something to add on that? No, no. I, I don't. Oh, so, so I would think of it that way. If, if you're approaching it with two forms of silica, the rice holes are going to be more of like your early gas. Uh, your microbial life, especially if things are popping, are going to break that down relatively quickly. The green sand is more of a long-term play. And from what I realized from some of these more long-term advanced farmers, it does seem might be necessary uh, to long-term to avoid compaction as well as adding a little bit of green sand with the, with the calcium. So I think the green sand is a fantastic play with, with things being in moderation. Obviously, don't be a moron, the whole gant, you know. Uh, but yeah, green green sand, if you view it that way, long-term play. Rice holes is short-term play. So you're getting both examples of that. Uh, and I think that it's you're going to be well-rounded as long as you're uh, cautious of not going overboard with, with it. Remember to sense? cook it down. Compost it first so you don't burn your plants. So let the biology have at it first then give it into your soil system so you're not going to burn any roots. That's one of the keys. I've always heard of green sand is kind of like biochar, you know, green sand. You're not adding that a lot. You know, it's like kind of a one-time amendment as far as I you know, know. But maybe other Yeah, maybe it's just for front-loading the, the soil system. I've used it uh, when I built my soil. Right. But, uh, yeah, I just was basically front-end loading the entire system with everything that I was adding. Then – composting it for 30 days then i had the biology break everything down so it wasn't going to burn my plant but it was just yeah i think it was more of a front end load but uh it's micronutrients is we we all need that 
Uh, and it, it does seem as as things are progressing, the green sand helps with the fact that the composting worms kind of want that grit. Um, so they might also be potentially breaking that down quicker. So it does seem like they add it maybe like once a year, maybe every two years. Uh, so, yeah, this is something um, to be, again, just moderation with this kind of stuff and you'll find huge success. Um, there's really it's almost kind of hard to shoot yourself in the foot using this style. If you are slow and patient and you kind of just like, all right, I'm letting a few things grow. Um, I had a successful flip um, and, and refocus on that because you want to make money with it too. I mean, it's, it's super discouraging to have like, uh, especially if you're silly with it and have like this huge basement grow, you've never done it before. And now you have a $1,500, uh, you know, electric bill with a failed crop. Uh, it's just, Ooh. Double whammy. Who the hell wants to do that? Um, so, yeah, patience is paramount with this. Um, and I think all of us would agree that chess moves and thinking of it that way is how you're going to find success. And, uh, Justin, I also think you're uh, an example today of tenacity and showing up. You know, just because you entered two times, what does that mean? All right, I'm entering a third time. Everybody says third time's the charm anyway. Boom, happened for you, you know? Um, and then who knows where that goes? I think opportunities open up for people that go out and kind of seek them um, and put in the work behind the scenes. Um, and that's the part that most people forget or refuse to kind of look at. Uh, like your, your example of your friend, like nobody's going to really see the fact that he was doing that shit night and day. They're going to think, wow, overnight, this dude sold his company. Look, he's a millionaire. You know, that's unfortunately how kind of a lot of people think it's like, that's that's not at all. This gentleman earned that shit, and he, uh, you know, found a way to sell something that he made, which is, I mean, that's pretty fucking cool, man. Like you, like it's like artists and all that. I've always found that I always kind of admired it in a way that people liked your art so much, whatever it was, they're willing to pay for it or come to your concert or see it at a museum. I mean, that's pretty cool, man. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys got time for one more. Oh, sorry, Marco, was I interrupting you? Mm-mm. I was just agreeing with Brian. Uh, you guys got time for one more question? Um, it is, is there such thing as too much silica? Or if I use rice? We are uh, so. Hello. Hello. Hold on. Uh, Hello. Hey, who's been doing dabs the whole show? <laughs> well, I, I, I could be doing this one and going, hey, you know, uh, Brian, somebody wants an adoption. Hey, here we go. Here's how many the kids I got, man? You see how many kids I got? He can't take no more kids, man. (laughs) Uh, Is diatomaceous earth good for silica like short term? Yeah, yeah, diatomaceous earth has silica in it, and it's actually good. um, You can eat diatomaceous earth for your body. uh, I do, every day. Yep. Uh, All right, on on the devil's advocate side of that, It does seem like there are people in the camp of if you use that maybe too much that you're going to kind of have this catch 22 spin your wheels thing where you're killing a lot of the beneficial uh, microbiology that you're trying to build up because you're using that as your source, um, uh, you know, for silica. So why do you say that? Because it's kind of like a glass to them, from what I understand. Um, When it's dry, that's only when it's dry. When it's wet, it's 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 not a glass to them anymore. So that's why when people try to use diatomaceous earth to fight isopods, and then they water it, then they start watering their beds, it gets wet and it's no longer going to work. So you got to keep it in a dry form for that. To, to for that, that side of it, yeah. 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 And once it's in, if it's in the soil, it it's like a clay. It it turns gets really uh, mushy, like you know. And I don't think it has that killing power anymore. Um, from what I read. All right. Hey, maybe we could get Mariah to come on. Yeah, that'd be a good one to know. Well, there you go, Brian. You just got another guest suggestion for another show to find out more about that. And I like I used oyster shell flour, so it's basically yeah, the same thing, fun. but I make sure I get a food grade. Um, and yeah, I consume that every day with my cannabis, uh, just to get that extra silica and everything that's that's in those diatoms. Hmm. Well, I've been using the oyster shells, um, Marco, in the isopod things, and it seems like the uh, that might be another way to really populate springtails because they go crazy on that. 
I've been noticing since you said that. Well, so I, since I told you and you've been saying that, I've been noticing it again. And I'm like, yes, he's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's interesting. Totally. Cal yeah, yeah. Calcium, everybody says it on almost every show, but calcium really is king. And it seems like if you're able to provide that, uh, the microbial life in that world is like, hell yeah. yeah Everybody's so anybody, getting paid. Anybody in the ice pod mm -hmm. game, that it was pure gold what just got discussed. Remember that mm -hmm. one. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So we're we're good on questions and everything, Ken. Right. Um, yeah, unless you want to uh, just do. Oh, hold on, where am I? Comments. Here we go. Check one last time. Uh, uh, no, we can always go. Uh, hey, Brian, ever come across the Primus or three o three o G in Colorado? Um, I think. The guy that created the flubber was at one of those early cannabis things, and he had the 303 OG and a Lucky Charms that he was, like, pressing. Um, so that was one of the first times I ever had a dab, and I'm pretty sure um, it, one of them was the 303 OG. I've never come across the Primus. Okay, and then uh... – I have to apologize, Cheddar Bob. Yes, okay. <laughs> I was going to say that. In my head too. Miami, though. Hey, I'll I'm be in Massachusetts. In state. <laughs> it I'm feels like a state when you go down there. It's like its own little world. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, Cheddar, I love you because you're my my uh, um, Canadian brother in the south or, or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, Brian, one last one from Dogs. Uh, you want to uh, have that skunk? Well, he's going to come down this fall, and, and he's going to hit you up with some of that stuff, man. I would love it, man. I miss that, especially in the – there's nothing better in the fall when it's kind of, like, brisk and you're out there burning. And, like, there's a little extra burn in the lungs. I always enjoyed that growing up as a kid. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I would love it, man. Oh, well, real quick, uh, Rubber Ducky Isopods has made it to the minor leagues. We are now able to go to this thing called the Reptilian Nation. Uh, we are going to that this weekend in Utah. Uh, it's uh, in, in this little world. It's a pretty cool yeah. event, a pretty big event around the country. So to be able to vend there is actually means something from, you know, as I'm learning. So we are a part of it. Um, yeah. So we are excited to have this new kind of almost like portal states and all these other things open up to us. Uh, so if you potentially are in Utah, please come see us uh reptilian nation this weekend and and uh my imo is in the little leagues with you the minor leagues that yeah. is right yeah i'm rolling with you brother we're talking about a variety of things so we're you know behind the scenes um and again that's why marco and i have the ability to do all this kind of stuff is like you got a little bit of passive income you know we i think marco and i have a lot of ideas but if we could you know put a few of these into the marketplace now you have a few things that people are purchasing on a continuous basis. And I know our audience can achieve that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats on that. Man. Appreciate I know that, you've been guys. wanting that. You've been growing, man. You've been, you keep still growing. I love it. Yeah. And I, I kind of like the way that they do it. You know, you almost have to prove yourself as a company before they'll let you into certain things. Because from what I understand, there's just so many people there. It's pretty hard uh, not to do well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Justin, so uh, do you have anything coming up? Or you got some classes or anything? I have some, uh, some new strains I'm working on that I'm going to be giving away some seeds of here very soon. Very, very excited for a strain of the mine that I have. It's Soaring Cement. It's Gorilla, Gru Gorilla Glue crossed with Animal Face. And I crossed it, or I took... Uh, I took it, reversed it, took female pollen from it, and crossed it to blueberry, a uh, really, really nice, super terpy, uh, you know, a blueberry that a good friend of mine got actually uh, and brought to me there, or came into hands, and I was able to take it on. Uh, it was interesting. Nobody else wanted it except for me, but I love it. It's, it's absolutely Straight out old school blueberry, um, and I crossed it. And you guys were talking about skunk before. Right now, I have a friend that's doing some testing also, and he has one pheno, and I have one pheno that straight out smells like skunk, just like 
right out like old school skunk. I'm like, damn, I'm like, something about this cross is really bringing out some interesting terps. So very excited for that coming out here. And I do have a breeding project that I'm going to be working on too with the papaya punch. I reversed it and I have about six or seven strings that I'm going to be hitting it with. Um, Fantastic. So, some good stuff coming up soon. Exciting stuff, man. Sounds great. Marco, how about you, brother? I think you were heading to Boston or something. You're doing a, a live event? Yeah, I'm heading to, I was invited to do NOFA Mass, um, their summer conference. I've done, um, this will be my third conference with them. Um, the other two were virtual because of, you know, the uh, COVID and all that bullshit. Um, but this is the first one. It'll be live. So I will be standing in front of people and talking. And um, then we'll, uh, after that, we'll go do a walk around the campus with people that want to go, you know, kind of talk IMO and learn some things about where I would look and just kind of have a good, nice, uh, nice little morning, I think. So if anybody's in if anybody's in uh, Boston area, um, hit me up. I'll be there this weekend. Well, there you go. So that's uh, uh, why everybody should be following uh, Marco on IG and Justin and Brian. You know, guys, uh, these events, our voices are getting out there more and more and more. And you guys are part of that. And your voices matter in this community. I love how you guys are participating in the chat. Thank you very much. Um, and anybody in the chat that wants to get on, you know, hit up Brian. You know, I, I'm sure Brian would love to have you guys come on and hit up Marco. Um, everybody's always looking for more voices to come on with. Share what you know. Share what you love. Um, don't forget Brian and Layton tomorrow on the Living Soil Conversation. And uh, Oda Herb um, Thursday night as well. Uh, I know Chad's on, I think on Saturday, uh, guys, the shows are amazing. Make sure you hit the bell. You hit the thumbs up. We need, always need those thumbs up guys. It really helps. And, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. Cause we're always gonna have specials coming up. So don't ever forget. We love you guys. You guys mean everything to us. Cause without you guys, why would we even need to be here? So anybody else have anything to say? Uh, just real quick, tomorrow with Layton, um, we have uh, Ben coming back to back um, with another episode, but he's bringing uh, a hash gentleman, Synergy Hash uh, Company. His name is Zach. Uh, so if you know you really enjoyed talking with Ben last week, uh, he's not only coming back, uh, but bringing the homie that really understands obviously hash. Um, and you know, to pick these gentlemen's brains is, is going to be one for the books again. So again, I hope that you guys see that we're going out of our way sometimes last minute, uh, to, to put these shows on where, where content matters. Um, and thankful again to have been on because that gentleman is, um, really next level, not only from a growing standpoint, but he actually knew the nuances and understood the kind of just the bullshit behind the scenes of what it takes to actually do a build out from, you know, the concepts and our ideas to actual concept um, is just a nightmare most of the time. Justin, thank you very much, my friend. It was wonderful thank seeing you, you and looking through your IG, man. It was great. So guys, with that, I'm going to end the broadcast and uh, 